flourish after all.
Mic test, one, two, check, 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 two, three, check, check, check. Welcome in, everyone. Just doing a quick little mic check here. Let us know if it's sounding good. Super excited for this live stream. Thank you so much for your patience. Your call is very important to us. Light up the chat. Put something in it. Okay. Press enter. I strictly told him not to talk. Oh, yeah, you did? I did. Oh. I, you didn't listen. I didn't know this was live. We're live now. Oh. I don't see myself, so I didn't know. No, uh, but I mean, if the green, okay. Well, <laughs> fair. Well, I told them, I was like, if you're not on screen, then you can't be heard, essentially. Well, they're obviously not listening because no one's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> they are right there. Coggle says, I hear Nicholas. Oh, I know Coggle. Coggle is my best friend. There you go. Okay. Thank y'all so much. Hi, Alyssa. Hello. What's up, Light Hope? Welcome back to the stream. Um, we, uh, we're excited to be here. Okay. Let's do this. You still hear the music in the background, right? It's not too loud, is it? I don't hear any music. You don't hear any music? No. We don't need music. Boom. Now I turned it off. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're gonna be on screen in like two seconds, Nicholas. You ready? Yes. Okay, three, two, <laughs> one. Get in the camera. <laughs> I'm shy. Oh my gosh. Hello. Hi. Welcome in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Thank you for your patience. Again, your call is very important to us. Um, your call and your money. <laughs> Press that code. Your call, your call and your money. Um, I have obviously you can if you ha if you can't tell, there's more than one of me in this here booth. I'm here just playing chess. Don't have time to chat. No worries, Light Hope. Thanks so much for tuning back in. We met you in the last stream, and I appreciate it. Um, but. Uh, we have a, a special guest here sitting in my chair, like the chair. I'm giving it to him. Hi, a musical cupcake. That's Alyssa. Yes, hi, I Alyssa. I am a no, multi-grain no, muffin top. <laughs> like, I'm healthy and I have a muffin top. We're almost at 300 viewers. Oh, Don't work. freak out. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so in honor of Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, I thought what better way than to spotlight some amazing Asian American... Creator, specifically in the world of storytelling. Um, loving the Nook shirts. Yes. Okay. So first of all. Do you have one? Because you can buy one. Press, what's the command? Exclamation point merch. Plus exclamation point merch. <laughs> I didn't tell him to wear this. I, I, I decided to put this on when we got I back. I wore it because I'm a good person. <laughs> So you didn't you didn't wear it because you wanted to be nice and like. No, I wore it because I love you and I wanted me. to support you. You love me? You. Okay, good. I'm glad you love me. Um, okay, so thank you, Coggles. Coggles, good to have you back. A round of applause for Coggles. Woo! Coggles, thanks so much for, for joining us. Appreciate it. Um, okay, let's get started because there's so much to talk about, and um, I'm super excited to have you here. So no no talking, Nicholas, until after I introduce you because oh, I spent— Oh, because I'm not here. You're not here, technically. I spent— no, I kind of want you in the frame so you can see what I wrote about you because I oh. I woke up this morning and I was like, Feeling I got to like come up with like an extra at, uh, intro okay. for him. Okay, so chat, let's get hype up in the chat. Here we go. That's it. See, Coggles has already put in our special, um, oh. uh, what Whoa. is it called? Command. Okay, so here we go. Let's, let's start this. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hi. Um, I've written a really interesting intro for... This person next to me. Okay, here we go. Nicholas Pillipil is a Filipino American award winning playwright. It's true. And songwriter <laughs> who has been happily busy busy opening the world premiere of his play called The Bottoming Process at the LGBTQ Center in Los Angeles. I was just there, I watched it the second time. Presented by I Am a Theater Company. That's I A M A. And it runs now through June twelfth. Nicholas helped to fund and co-write the highly anticipated debut EP from Michael Barnum, yours truly, um, called Trust, back in 2016. On top of being that, mm, he is a connoisseur of all things theater, art, storytelling, and at certain moments shows just how big his heart is. We are so excited and pleased to have him back in the Barnum stream in person. So... Barnumals, please give a nice warm welcome, a nice Barnumal welcome to my co-writer for life, my Asian tiger mom who calls me out on my mm and never apologizes for it, the legitimate source of all my success, 
Nicholas Filippo. Woo! How amazing. There's a button. There's a button here for like applause. Where is it? Press I, it. I will, because you deserve it. Yes. You want to do it yourself? I want. I don't okay. know. Boom. Oh, top five. Top five. Top five what? I don't know. That just says top five. Oh. Okay. I yes. agree. I am top five. You are. You you definitely be my top eight on like. My on MySpace, I did. It? Yeah, for sure. I agree. You had one, right? On oh MySpace? yeah. Okay. Would I be in your top eight? Of course. I only like eight people. Like what number? Um, <laughs> probably two. Oh my god, chat. Really? I might make you three because Mara might get hurt that she's not two, but I think I I would make you two <laughs> in real life. <laughs> That's so. I'm. I. You know what? I'll take it. I will take it. Okay. Um. All right. Let's. I think we'll just we'll hop right into it. Um. Again. We're excited to have you. Thank you, Nicholas, for making time to join us here on the Barnable Stream. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What did we do today? We went to watch my play. Uh huh. Oh, and it was so fun because, first of all, the play is amazing and I'm funny. But Michael Barnum was crying throughout oh the whole God. the whole piece. I'm just watching the show like this. Oh wait, like this. And then I just look over and I see. <laughs> Not okay. First of all, I'm an emotional person. And then, and then it goes <laughs> for 15 minutes. Listen, I try to hold it together. 15 straight minutes to I try end to of hold the show. It, I try to hold it together, chat. Um, but I was also sitting next to my other best friend, whom I haven't seen in. So then, then that looked like this. <laughs> oh God. Linda, stop it. Okay. Anyway, yes, I sobbed, and it is a, a play that everyone should watch. Um, if you want more information about Nicholas's play, you can. Oh put... my God! Why are there two thousand of you? Hi. Oh, now you're excited. Press my name so you can follow me on the internet. Yes. Um, now I want the attention. Okay, so say thank you to Twitch for featuring us. Cause thank we're... you, Twitch. Are they featuring us? Yeah. Because cause... I'm Asian. Yes. Oh, and I'm hella Asian. I'm so Asian. I'm <laughs> Southeast Asian. That like, and I'm brown. <laughs> Right? Like, you don't see me enough. Keep talking. Like, you you people only know yellow Asians. Oh, my God. Okay, we're on the front page. Yes, thank you, Coggles. We're I appreciate bitch. it. bitch. Someone send me a screenshot of that. Same oh, way. sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Now All we're right. on if the you're just page. joining and you're watching on the front page, um, we're kind of no filter right now. My name is Michael. This is my best friend, uh, Nicholas Billabill. He is a award-winning playwright, Filipino-American playwright, songwriter, and my Asian tiger mon- mom, as I like to call it. Um, he has a play. It's called The Bottoming Process. It's playing now in, in Hollywood. If you want more information, use the TBP command. Um, and we're actually offering a 20% discount code. Discount for y'all. code. So if you want to come and you're in L.A., which we're inviting you. And I'm going to QVC this. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And if you buy a ticket Uh-oh. and you, like, prove it somehow, I don't know how people Screen on the Internet do baggy. that. I don't know. We're gonna give you a free Michael Barnum merch shirt. Oh, we are? Yes. Oh, what? You, you are worth a, you the get risk. A shirt? You get a shirt that says you are worth the Bro. risk because you think I am worth the ticket, you know? Because you are. I am. You I are. agree. <laughs> you are. Look, we're on the front. We're literally on the front page. Oh, bitch. We have the I fr- mean, oh, work. <laughs> Sorry. <stop. laughs> Wait, I want to take a picture of it. That's so cool. Yeah, okay. Um, thank you so much, Twitch. Um, I appreciate Hi. it. Uh, so today we're gonna we're gonna okay. not only talk about Nicholas's uh, play, but we're also gonna talk about uh, being a storyteller in the community of Asian American Pacific Islander. Um, so, so yeah, the the conversation seems like we're being done, but really the point of the conversation today is just talk about being an Asian American creative mm-hmm. and what goes into telling our stories. Yes, and why it's important and why like we don't have to wait until May to celebrate what we are doing, right? That's true. Yeah. You know, I think all of you are probably fans of Michael Barnum and, you know, through his storytelling of music and, you know, just being himself yes. as a live streamer, you know, that's its own thing. And, you know, a lot goes into that, right? Yes. And, yeah, I don't Absolutely. know. You're the host. I don't know what I'm No, saying. yeah, can you Can you elaborate on what it's, what it, what, what it's been like? Um, I think let's just start with with um, this piece since we're talking about it, the bottoming process. You as an Asian American playwright, what has that process been like for you, kind of finding your own voice within this world of the storytelling, if you will? So I'm a playwright, mm-hmm. and the reason why I started playwriting was because like I started playwriting when 
like diversity was like really chic right like no one cared and then one day everyone was like oh have you heard of this thing called diversity and like everyone cared for some reason and so that's why i started writing plays because i just wanted to create like asian bodies on stage and i wanted to put people in them like my friends like michael barnum um and so i just started writing plays and it was like that and then you know um once people started being like oh you're not bad i'm like okay i'll do this forever (laughs) um and then that just kind of started evolving and started being more personal whereas i started working for other people eventually as my writing evolved and grew it became about how i can use my writing to tell the tr- my own truth m- explore everything that i'm going through on the inside and uh in the same way i think writing songs are therapy mm-hmm. um writing plays are the exact same thing for me it just it takes a longer time and it's a two hour long song mm-hmm. um, where they don't sing mm-hmm. <laughs> you know um and honestly then i think this is like one thing i want to talk about too is like when we're talking about creative storytelling and telling our truth through our art I actually was not successful until I started being honest with myself in my work. And I think that's one thing that I always try to tell people when they're like asking for advice. And, you know, I think, you know, I think like this t-shirt says, you are worth the risk. If we're not risking something for our art, I feel like it's not, it's not as potentially impactful as it can be. I feel like all of our art should feel risky and dangerous and it should feel like we're losing a piece of ourself because then otherwise like, um, what's the point? You know what I mean? I agree. And um, so uh, speaking to the evolution of my playwriting, nowadays where I sit in with my writing, everything I write is inspired and informed by an experience that I'm going through. Or it's a, something that I want to say from the heart. And mm-hmm. once I figured that out, that's when people started paying attention. Yeah. And what's interesting is once I started telling my truth, that's when my stories actually got universal. You know, before that, I was trying to be general and be like, this is going to hit people and like no one responded to it. Everyone was just like, Oh, that's funny. Cause you're weird. <laughs> but then once I got specific, my messages got universal and then people are like sobbing at me being like, you're telling my story. Yes. Da, da, da. And yeah. What was the yeah, question? Me like crying yeah. um, for 30 minutes in the theater. No, um, I think it's great that you mentioned that because remember when we had lunch at the other Thai place, I said, why do you think, people are now resonating right what you're writing why do you think people are listening so actively now why do you think you're getting all these um uh recognition you're being acknowledged for your work now and you told me you said i think because you just stopped giving so much um you care so much about what other people thought yeah yeah i think yeah it's like you know a lot of people i think we owe it to ourselves to be selfish and we need to put ourselves first a lot more And what I've started to realize is when I put myself first, I'm actually better equipped to um, uplift others, Mm. you know, and Mm -hmm. take care of other people. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, you know, I think, you know, they say in comedy, there's truth in comedy. It's funny because it's true, right? Right. Jokes are funny because they're true. Um, And so when you're just playing off of the truth, people connect, you know. Yes. I love that you said that it has to cost you something. And I think that with any piece that you work on, any piece of art you make, mm-hmm. it does have to come from a place of um, w- w- that is truthful. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, since we're talking about like Asian Americanness, or even if we're thinking of otherness, and, you know, if you're like BIPOC in it, uh, outside of just being Asian American, mm-hmm. you know, I think that um, we don't have the privilege like um white people do to just do whatever we want right like um we the only thing we own and i say this in the play like the only thing i own is my identity right and so in order to get where i'm going or do what i want to do like that's the only thing that i own that i can use to have leverage i guess right Mm -hmm. you know like if i want to write something i have to take it for myself Mm -hmm. and you know that's the cost that I pay because that's what I know the best and like and it's, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because like you know I in playwriting world I think like when you're a person of color no one kind of cares about your story unless you're writing about the trauma of being a person of color right mm. like if you look at like a theater season and you have like these white plays where people are sitting in living rooms and it's about like I don't know parents fighting because their kids at recess don't like each other like Mm-hmm. Asian people can't write that play because no one cares. They want, they only want our things when it's like, 
oh, your grandma died on a boat and now she's a ghost who hunts you and you're living through trauma because immigration exists? Like, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so it's weird that, like, we have to lean into those traumas in order to be heard. But the thing, again, like I'm saying, is, like, those are something, the only things that we have. Yes. Um, which sucks, but, you know. But you, it's, it's in, in a way, it's kind of using what you've been given to help leverage you to the next moment yeah you and will. you know i think um for me like when you look at because i'm a theater person so that's where i work if you look at like popular asian plays a lot of them are about you know immigration and it's about you know the trauma that we carry from our ancestors and the generations before us right mm-hmm. and so the stories are based off of that and lead off of that and you know i think where i come in with my storytelling again it's like I try to make it all about me, right? And so in the play, The Bottoming Process, a lot of it is about um, how the consequences of my decisions and my actions influence my life and my actions and reactions. It's not like what all the other plays that are popular where it's like the main character is moving through life informed by the trauma of their mother or like the expectations of their Asian parents and then you know, that's how they navigate the story. Right. A lot of writers, I think, um, try to blame everything on their parents and blame everything on their histories for why they are the way they are, which is true. A lot of that is true, but I just don't find that interesting to write anymore. Or, like, everyone's doing that, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so, like, a lot of what I'm writing, especially in the bottoming process, a lot of it is, like, I'm going through these things, and it's all because of how I am navigating through the world, yes. right? Yes. You know, it's like how I perceive things, how the world perceives me and, you know, um, based off of like, oh, I'm going through this problem because of someone I love. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Do you feel as though like sitting in this power, what it feels like it's just me as your friend or just somebody just observing from the outside looking in, like you're sitting in this place of a, a position that you never really like owned before and it feels albeit in, in some ways new, but also familiar in the sense because you know you're worthy of, of sitting in this place. You feel as though you are claiming your story and being heard through having this story shared on a stage like this. Yeah, it's interesting. I think, you know, as Asian Americans, mm-hmm. uh, specifically a Filipino American, we are bred with so much shame and we are um, raised with love, but we are raised with love to feel small. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think a lot of things are ingrained in me to quiet myself, right? And to portray parts of myself within a container of what is acceptable. Mm. Um, and so it took a while for me to get where I'm at, where I, I can tell a story like The Bottoming Process, which is very vulnerable. And, you know, it's about falling in love. <laughs> it's about queerness. Mm-hmm. It's about sex. Mm-hmm. And all those things, you know, like things that, you know, Asian people don't talk about or yeah. highlight. Yeah. Again, you like the only things that you know about us are that, you know, if it's an Asian person that's selling the story, it's like, oh, my grandma's a ghost and she was in Mulan, right? Or whatever. <laughs> and if it's a white person telling an Asian story, it's like, she's hot and her feet are cute, right? <laughs> um, and so, like, where I fall somewhere, like, in the middle where I think my feet are cute and um, there are no ghosts in the story. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I don't know. oh, sorry. And so, like, I don't know what I was saying, but. Sorry. No. Yeah. I just want to chime in real quick because we're almost at 3,000 viewers now um, on Twitch. So, thank you, Twitch, for featuring um, us on the front page on Carousel Slot That's One. really cool. Really appreciate it. Again, if you're just joining, my name is Michael. I am a singer, songwriter, music streamer. Um, but today we're, I'm not music streaming. In fact, we're actually talking about storytelling, um, which is the nature of what we do. And this is my best friend, Nicholas Pilipil, who is a award-winning playwright and songwriter. He's helped me write many songs. Um, and speaking of, we have a song that we've written for the show, which we'll get to. Um, but specifically, we're here to talk about storytelling, um, but only that uh, a focus on his play, which is has just opened a couple days ago here in in L.A. called The Bottoming Process. Is anyone from L.A. here? Yeah, if you're from L.A. If you're from L.A., like, come pop to a, Hi, Angie. Pop a something so we know. Yeah, if anyone is in L.A., um, take a look at the information. Use the TBP. That's T as in Tom, B as in boy, P as in Pat. Command, Coggles, if you could drop. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi, Hello. VIP. 
Yes. Also, it's also, <laughs> are there like actually theater people in here? Like people who like theater or yeah, Broadway theater kids? or plays? Maybe you're on the front page and you're like, what is this? Come on, click through and, and yeah. join us for this conversation. Because we're gonna we're gonna talk about my show. It has like Broadway stars in it, and we wrote a song for like the lead who is like yeah. a legitimate Broadway star. Can you? Uh, Nicholas does really well on his TikTok, which by the way, you should follow him on TikTok. I'll Nicholas follow him on TikTok. Um, uh, he gave like a sixty second uh, description of. Uh, of what the play's oh, about. Oh, do you want me to do and it And I'm going to do it again. I you're can gonna do, do it, it live. live. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to give chat. I'm going to give Nicholas. Oh, you're going to actually give me 60 seconds? Yeah, oh, I'm no, going to give is... Nicholas 60 seconds. This was not planned. This is going to be bad. Um, To pitch the bottoming process uh, to 2,400 plus viewers right now. Ready, Nicholas? Okay, okay. 60 seconds on the clock. Ready, set, Go. The bottoming process is a romantic comedy about two people falling in love despite their differences but struggling to stay together because of them. The story follows Milo Santos, a 20-something Filipino-American essayist who is funny and hard to crack. He writes about love, queerness, and um, other stuff. And the story starts when he has a chance encounter with John Powell, a famous YA novelist who's like 40-something, think non-turf J.K. Rowling, as they mate, date, and cohabitate. But the same things that I don't know, but 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 they struggle to stay together, and chaos ensues as they try to stay in love. But to help them along the way is there is Milo's BFF Rosie, who's an actress, and John's agent Charlie, who is a a boss bitch. The play, the play, Ten explores themes of intergenerational, Five, interracial, four, um, love three, and romance. Two. Asian American One. themes, Stop. fetishism, <laughs> power structures between like, like gay men and like um, power of like sexual positions and race and other things, and it's really funny. And if you love like pop culture, there's so many jokes for you. It's really funny. If you, um, yeah. Oh, if you love like talks on like racism and queerness i think the play will yes. really make you feel seen okay um yeah you're way over time but oh, you're work. you did yes good job that was thank really you. good thank that was you. fun i didn't even think of doing that i was like that's fun i'm gonna make him pitch the entire so that yes it's the bottoming process it's playing now in hollywood if anyone is in la we encourage y'all to uh come check out the uh the show we're offering 20 percent off tickets using that little um, using the uh, the code that that's written in the command. Okay, um, and you can get a free shirt if you buy a ticket. We'll send you this free shirt. Well, what if like two thousand people buy tickets? Well, then, then I don't have two thousand shirts. Well, then you better buy it fast. <laughs> while supplies last. <laughs> while supplies last. In fact, if any of y'all do buy a ticket and you're coming to the show, um, I guess we'll throw a shirt somehow. But we have to have proof that you did it. If you so. buy a ticket, okay. Then it's officially a meet and greet, and he's gonna go to. But what? Oh, okay. Yeah, huh? they they love you. They're gonna want to meet you. I know y'all love me. Okay. Um. All right. So let's talk about. Should we? Can we talk about the song? What do you want to do? Um. So, uh, Michael and I are. Um. <laughs> songwriters. We are songwriters. <laughs> we write music together. Did you all know that? Yes, Nicholas uh, was my co-writer for my first EP when I was a wee little baby. I just want to let you know, oh all of you owe me, because oh he's God. only a musician because I forced him to be one. This guy had no belief in his talent or who he was until I made him do it. So true. And That's so why true he calls chat. me his mom. Yeah. Because I literally took off my shoe <laughs> and hit him, and I said, you can do this. I didn't and then he still me. didn't believe me, so then I literally wrote the songs with him yeah. and that's why I'm not on the second album because <laughs> I had to let him fly <laughs> and you did and how did I do and then everyone was like this is why I like the first album so much better <laughs> just kidding <laughs> It's true. Um, I would not be where I, I literally said that in my intro I said oh wait comment the... what your favorite Michael Barnum song is I want to know oh okay and, he's, and I hope it's one it's that I wrote. One that he wrote. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, let me go back because I, I literally wrote in your in my intro of you that you're literally the the result of all my success. Like, I'm not the result of it. I'm mostly joking, but I I, I do like Fair. to say that like, um, 
that you needed the push. Thank you. I did. And I think the reason why I say that, and again, because we're talking about being Asian American in creative storytelling, is mm -hmm. that like we don't believe that we can do these things. We don't believe that our stories are worthy. We don't believe that we are worthy because of how we are raised. How we are raised yeah. to think that we aren't good enough to do these things. Yeah. That we are only okay enough to yeah. try to be a nurse, right? And so like you need to find like the weird friend who gets D's in school to push you to do things that aren't academic. Um, yes. And so like, you know, if you have like these inklings to do things, inklings, inklings, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm here to push you and tell you just to try. Just yeah. try it. Because then like, look what happens when you try and you jump off the deep end. You you sit in like a, like multi comma box space that's soundproof as your job with 2,817 people watching. Yeah. So, I you know. the same about you. Just like the shirt, you are worth the risk I, to do something that you want to do that's weird and yeah. just believe in yourself that you can do it. And well, if you don't thank, believe in yourself. Thank you for making this about me when it was Just think about, about me. Uh, me hitting Michael Barnum with my shoe yeah. saying you could be a singer songwriter because then. No, it's true. Like, honestly. Look at him now. Honestly, chat, like, coming from, you know, Growing up in an Asian American household, you you don't really kind of get told that you can do everything. I mean, maybe that gets told to you explicitly, but you don't really believe it just because it feels. I mean, growing up, like I barely saw people that look like me on television or film at that time, or even in music. And I feel like just in the r last like few years, we're just now scraping the surface of what that's like. Like you know, pe seeing people like Michelle Yeoh, her whatever, like. It, it still Shuiti. feels like who? Shuiti. Shuiti, yeah, you know things like that, and you know, I, and I, I, I guess, as much as I want to deny it, that is a part of like why there's like shame built into how ambitious my dreams are. Like sometimes yeah. I even find myself being like, oh, I don't think I'm worthy or deserving to play a big stadium such as Madison Square Garden or what have you, or you know even small venues or things like that, just because those opportunities were never presented to me like that or like my mom she studied voice and piano and she always encouraged me to follow my dreams and, and pursue music but like there's this always a thought in the back of the mind being like people like us don't have these opportunities well that's like a thing i think specifically uh, being filipino mm -hmm. is that we're actually all entertainers Filipino people are very artistic and Filipino people are very vain. We love the attention. We all want to perform and we all want you to tell us we're amazing. <laughs> but the thing is like when we we yeah. don't do it. A lot of us don't do it. Yeah. Because then if we move outside of the Filipino-ness within the Asian-ness, just Asian culture is like mm -hmm. not to do those things. Mm -hmm. So like being Filipino, if we just get specific, like we're very repressed in that way because we're very big. That's why like one of our stereotypes is that we sing karaoke and that, you know, we all are great singers because like it's bred in us and in our blood that mm -hmm. Filipino people are entertainers and we love to perform and we love to sing. Yes. And honestly, we are so vain. We love ourselves so much. And so, like, it's really sad to, like, see these things. Like, I know people in my family who could be, like, a Michael Bartum. Like, they're amazing. And, like, they literally have, like, dumb jobs and don't even try. But, like, they'll, like, tear up at karaoke. And it's, yeah. like, it's like, oh, if, if you just tried, like, you could have done something. But we don't. And so, it's, like, yeah. yeah. I think that's also why yeah, a lot you of people. You are worth the risk. Just try. You know what? I try. And I am worth a wish. Search worth on Spotify, risk. Michael Barnum. I try. No, I think there's also like you're so right. Like there's a lot of people who are out there doing their you know regular nine to five jobs. And again, there's nothing wrong with being a nurse or having those things. But I know that there are a lot of people who have bigger dreams and have bigger ambitions. And maybe it's not to work in that space or whatever. And you know, just feeling like you don't have the opportunity or the the. I guess the power to step in, in into those spaces. So, I mean, I feel as though for me as a creator now, like I'm have I I'm able to kind of boldly do what I want now. I'm apologizing less, if you will. Just you know, I do that too. I'm trying to apologize less. <laughs> I'm trying to say no more. Yeah, that's like a, that's like a thing. Yeah. yeah. And like, yo, what's up, Brian? Hi, Brian. Welcome in. Again, if you're on the front page, uh, thank you, Twitch, for, for uh, amplifying AAPI creators. 
Um, my friend Nicholas Bilipo here is a Filipino-American playwright, songwriter, award-winning playwright, and we're talking about storytelling Ooh. specifically in the Asian-American uh, community. Um, I identify as Filipino-American. Hello, hi, we're live. And uh, I identify as fierce American. <laughs> fierce, Philip, fierce Filipino-American. What's up? We're looks, we so cute. I know. I'm, we're I'm very looking. cute. I think um, it's because like I didn't eat the past two days, so I look really. Snatched. He ate. We had we had food after after the show. We we had Thai food. Uh, thanks so much for joining in, Brian. Appreciate it. Uh, well, where was I going with this? I forgot. Are there any like creatives in here? Like, what do you do? Like, if yeah. you're here, I would love to know. Chat. Let's let's turn it over to y'all so we can uh, get some uh, some y'all chat in. So we have like thing. singer, we have songwriter, we have what playwright. is a creative thing that you do? What? How do you tell stories? Let's let's say that. Yeah. Chat. How do you tell stories? My I'm identity is transparent. And my pronouns is who and where. Okay, hey. Jean Olivier. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Hey who? Hey who? <laughs> who? What? Where? When? How? Why? Yes. But the question is, chat is what. How how do you creatively tell stories? Is it through music? Do you uh, write uh, plays like Nicholas? Do you write books? Do you write poems? Whatever it is, chime in. Um, what is Nicholas? What what was what was your like first introduction to the world of writing? Um, Either songwriting or just writing in general. Did you always know you wanted to be a writer? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I really don't know. You know, I think in here. school I did like I loved writing essays. Mm -hmm. Like English was like my favorite because I loved writing essays and argument argumenting. Or I don't know, arguing like things <laughs> and things like that. I loved book reports. Like one of my other favorite things is just to read books. Okay. And so I used I just yeah I think I did, but I you know like. You do these things and you don't know that they can be things that you can do with your life. Again, yeah. Again, with the the Asianness of it all, it's yeah. like, you know, you don't know that things you enjoy can be options for what you can do for the rest of your life. Yeah. And, you know, I've I've always wrote things. I've always tried to journal, and I never liked it because it was scary. Um, I loved writing essays in school, which is interesting so now because now, like, the main character in my play is an essayist. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I love nonfiction writing. I love reading memoirs. And, like, in my new, like, my next set of dreams is, like, I would love to write, like, a collection of essays on just everything that I think and believe. Um, which was fun because, like, in the play, the character is an essayist. So, for the play, I wrote, like, multiple essays that, like, yeah. project on the wall that he types. And when he's typing, like, it'll project and you see what he's writing in real time. Or sometimes people will have to pick up a book and they'll read the book. And, like, I wrote those things. So, those were, That's like, really, really fun cool. to write. I learned about this just recently. This is my second time watching the show. I'm going to see it again. So, if you all are around in June, come with me and... We could do like a Barnumal night. Yeah, hell yeah. Hello, Barnumals. If you're in L.A., come with me. We could do like a group sale or something. We'll go as a group or something like that. My L.A. fam. Uh, but I definitely want to go back and go early so I can look at the little essays that are written because it's really cool chat. It's uh, projected on onto the stage, and it's, um, it's just a really immersive experience and, and a great way to kind of set you up for the mood of the play, which is it's such a – crazy ride because one minute you're laughing your, your your butt off and then the next you are just your heart is shattered just because it has it deals with those things and it's not afraid to go there which i so commend you so much nicholas is that you're not afraid to again like you wrote this the thing is like it's so weird because like when i write it like i put like everything on the page mm -hmm. like literally mm -hmm. like it's a hundred percent honest and like and people watch the play and it's like you all you hear is like mm, oh mm -hmm, mm, like you know because like I, there's like no hold bars is that yeah. the word like yeah, yeah. i go there but the thing is i'm not comfortable with it still like so every mm. time i watch a show like i check my heart rate on my watch and it like s soars <laughs> and uh, and i sit in there in the audience i'm like why did i do this why did i get so vulnerable and i like sit in pain and like yesterday my dad saw it and that was like so hard for me because like like literally people are having gay sex on stage mm -hmm. and like people are like talking about things going in yeah things mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> good call um and um i'm like why did i do that like you know it's what's funny is like if you watch the show you see the main character 
and it's literally me on stage. It's just like a version of me. Like we had a design presentation and the costume designer was like, this is my idea for the costumes. And she threw up a collage mood board and it was literally all pictures of me. And I was like, whoa. So the character dresses like me, talks like me, was written by me. Then I was talking to the actor who plays him. His name is George Salazar. And he was like, oh, yeah, like, I, I model part of the character off of your mannerisms. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? And then, I, and then he showed me, and I was like, I don't do that. I'd be like, ugh. And he's like, you're doing it right now. I was like, no. And so, like, it's, really, it's, it's a really vulnerable space because it's like those are all the words that I wrote. I think the main character literally is me. I did write myself because – it's just easier that way. So like, it's weird to see myself on the stage portrayed by someone saying mm. things that I said, l- not necessarily living a story that I have lived through, but living parts of that. And yeah. it, it's, it is absolutely true as like someone who's known him weird. for a while. And even our other friend who again saw the show today and she hadn't seen Nicholas in, in years. And she was like, that's literally him on stage yeah. from like costume, from mannerisms to like just how he talks and, I mean, that's, I think that's prevalent in just the way you've crafted this character. There's, It just feels so grounded and real. And I think that's probably why people are resonating with it. Because And that's, like, the thing, too, because, like I said, it's, it's hard for me to watch and experience because of how I'm afraid of being perceived because, like, you can look at it and there's no hiding from it. Like, mm-hmm. it, I wrote it. It's me. It looks like me. Mm-hmm. So there's a fear of being per- perceived as a certain way because I... I literally mirrored myself in the story but what makes it worth it at the end is just and this is this was like a surprise and this is what i was saying earlier where like i'm just telling my truth Mm -hmm. and by doing that i hope to just work through my own stuff you know Mm -hmm. it's like a a therapy in self-love i guess and so what i don't expect is when people come up to me afterwards being like thank you you for telling my story and it's like thank you i went through that exactly you know um the director Rodney Toe and the lead actor um, George Salazar, we've been working on this play together for three years. And the reason why all of us connected on this play is because like they literally came up to me and they're like, they're like, thank you for writing this. This play could be a biography. Hmm. Like all of our experiences are so close to this hmm. that like, and I never expected that. Right. I'm just telling my truth. And through that, everyone else is just seeing themselves in it. So every time I feel like I'm going insane because of my fear of being perceived, like, in the end, it, it's almost worth it just because other people are perceiving it, but being seen in yes. their own way. So it's like an odd sacrificial thing where I'm like, okay, like I can feel uncomfortable if other people are being up- uplifted by it. But also it's funny because um, so the play is pretty much about like an Asian guy who falls in love with an older white guy and like the power struggles within that um of age and race and how things can conflict. But also if you look at it through a, like a queer lens of like power and position and just like the hardships that they go through and the things you would think of that would happen with like white supremacy mm-hmm. and race and mm-hmm. things like it's, that. And so it gets pretty tough. And so when people say to me like, Oh, that's my story. Like the first thing I always say is like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> because like, if that's your story, you went through something really hard. Yeah. But then at the end of it, I have to be like, but thank you for like, seeing me i hope it's seeing you yeah i hope that you do recognize that in you crossing that threshold and uh speaking your truth that that helps other people see themselves yeah it's and something you, that i'm learning and it's really weird but well, um, i mean and you what's weird is like i don't know why it was a surprise to me because i've what i've realized recently because i took a break from songwriting for a while and then michael and i collabed on a song for this play and what I realized is this actually isn't a new feeling because we felt this together when we started writing music. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, and what's weird is because when the first few songs that we wrote, like, I took most of the lyrics. And so, like, I was just writing how I was feeling. Mm-hmm. And, like, you were able to find yourself in it Through the so music. you could sing it. Yeah. And then other people were doing the same thing. Yeah. And so, like, I just had that epiphany recently. And we're like, this isn't a new feeling. Why did I forget? Right. Mm. And he's like, you forget like these things. And that could have been a tool early on. Like if I never forgot that, maybe I would have come into my power sooner of writing plays from a more truthful place because like we were already doing it with music. And um, like one of our closest friends, like we got close because we played her a song and she cried and she hurt herself in the music. And then that was like 
such that was like the first time that ever happened and it's just like yeah like storytelling through song it's like such a thing and it's so powerful yes. and like it's a weird way of how it pulls people together but i think it's a great segue into yeah the song yeah we should talk about it again thank you all so much for tuning in appreciate it Cogos links for modding um everyone in the chat everyone on the front page watching us um we are my name is michael this is nicholas we're both asian american creative storytellers and different mediums whether it be playwriting songwriting fashion um, and modeling sure that i story tell through my body <laughs> yes but uh uh, especially now with Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, we're just celebrating and amplifying those voices, and um, th we appreciate the opportunity. Um, so let's talk about the song. There's a new song. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, thank you for the follow. M Mor Morgan, a uh, Morgan, thank you. And then H D Turkey Dogs, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome in. Be sure to smash that follow button if you have already. Um, let's talk about the song that we. Okay. Wrote. Oh my God. Okay, so. The play is not a musical. The play is a play. Mm -hmm. It's people talking, being like, um, what's your favorite line in the play? Oh, my God. There are a lot. There are a lot. Give me a funny one. The, no, the, I want to give it away. That one's a really good one. Which one is it? It's uh, Rosie's one where she talks about depression. And, and oh, yeah. so there's a character. Her name is Rosie. And so, like, she's talking to Milo, which which is the character based on me. And he's fall, have fall, he has fallen in love with this white guy. And he's like like rosie like this is so weird why am i crushing on a white guy it's so off brand because milo's like a very like woke person so yes. he thinks it's weird yes. and then rosie says she's like she's like you need to be loved by literally any kind of noun me i just want to fall in love and not have to fake an orgasm once in a while and then she's like what you really need to pay attention to is the mental health of this john and if he's the crazy one and not you because my mom said that white people invented depression through all their inbreeding. <laughs> and, the, like, in, and then she, like, convinces him to, like, just go on a date with, like, this white guy. That is... You probably wouldn't think that's my favorite line, chat, but it's one of them. Today, it stuck out to me because it made, like, the audience laugh for, like, a good 10, 15 seconds after that. It's just... It's so funny. Um, but, yeah, go ahead and talk about the song And so, process. so, um, <laughs> the play. Are there any fans of the TV show Younger? Um, maybe, perhaps. Okay, so the play takes place in um, the publishing world of books. Um, because when I started writing this play, I had just started a bookstagram account. And I was really into the TV show Younger. And so I was, like, in my, like, my book bag. Like, I was really into books. Mm -hmm. And so the play takes place in the world of publishing. It's about two authors. And so, like, they're writing their books. One's a nonfiction writer. One's a fiction writer. And um, at the end of the play there's a song that plays and so it's like a, a heartbroken love song that we wrote in order to kind of like underscore a specific moment and kind of just like add a stamp to it and mm -hmm. so we wrote this song that is like a heartbreaking love song but like if you listen to the lyrics they're very much tied into like literary themes and words um just to kind of fit in with the play and um so we wrote a song for it. So, like, the song is not necessarily a part of the play. It's not, like, a musical. It's not a play yeah. with music. It's, like, the reason why I wrote the song is because the director wanted to play another song. And I was, like, no. And he was, like, what if we make George cover the song and we'll play that? And I was, like, well, then I might as well just write it. <laughs> so, like. And so you did. I took ten minutes out of, like, my day in, in an ten email minutes, draft. Yeah, ten minutes. And in an email draft, I wrote lyrics to the entire song. And I was, like. And so I told him, I was like, well, I have a song. Let's just do this one. And then he was like, okay. And then, so then I had Michael help me with the music because I'm not, I'm not a musician, musician. Like literally the way we wrote the song is it was like, Michael, I like, really like the chord B major and then B minor. B minor C. And then, um, he like figured it out. He the put it is, together and okay. he, he came up with Let the me, track. And then, so we already have the words and this is how our songwriting process goes. Like, he took my B minor, he turned it into something, he came up with some melodies, uh -huh. and then, like, I took some of them and said, let's do this. And, like... That may not mean anything to you, Chad, but I get it, because... It happens. Yeah. I think what's really unique, I don't... There's no one that I... I write 
this way in this process at all. I think that's what's really unique about like this, you would so. think we're aliens because we're literally talking like this. It's like, <laughs> and that, and then I go back to him. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so you want to go, <laughs> or you want to go, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, and then it literally turns into something. Yes, it does. I, what I okay, what I really, and I, I don't really say this to Nicholas is very often. Hi, it's Regine. Hi, Regine. Hi, Regine. Thank you for the reset about 35 months. I'm here to say hi to Nicholas don't and leave. Nicholas alone. Oh, just you. Stay. It's probably working. It's okay. No. Um. No worries. Uh, so when Nicholas and I write, he always, I don't know how, but somehow always knows what the hell is happening in my life. Again, like, I'm not even trying to relate to you. I'm literally. I know. I'm literally just taking my um bleeding heart and going. I guess we just have parallel, <laughs> like, parallel lives or whatever, which is why I have such an attraction and affinity for this. My body. This, <laughs> this thing right here. <laughs> this, um. This play is because it feels so close to home. Like I, some of y'all know and chat and be vulnerable for the 2000 y'all that are in here. I went through a breakup last year. It was really hard. And um, Nicholas just has a way of, of simplifying everything that I'm going through and, and, and puts it in a way where it, it, it is doesn't need many words, but it has such an, something that's so impactful in the storytelling. And so one of the reasons I love working with him is that I don't have to worry about so much about like the, the words on the page. Like we don't have to come up with the story. He's already got that crafted usually before we even start writing. When I get into the creative process, it's just about finding melody and finding yeah. the right chords to play to, to, to help tell the story in the best way possible. And that for me just alleviates I'm curious, all the what is your approach to writing lyrics? Oh, it's. Oh, I'm better about it now. I'm not trying to say I don't know how to write lyrics. I obviously. Oh, you do, but I feel like our our lyric writing is different. It is absolutely different. And I just want to know because I don't. Oh, okay. I don't think we've ever talked about it. That's why. Oh goodness. Like, what is your approach when you're writing words? Uh, well, usually, I. Whatever's kind of like tugging at my heart, I'll kind of expand on that on what I'm feeling. Like, I the way I can tell this is like if I give an example, right? So for sometimes. And I wrote sometimes, exclamation point, sometimes if you want more information about that. Oh my God, it's so good. Like, I swear to God. Follow me on Instagram because at the end of the year, the Spotify thing, it's going to be like yeah. one, two, or he three. He uses it on like I like play everything. it so much. Like, Even literally, in his TikToks. when I first heard it, I was like texting him. I was like, oh my God, my body. <laughs> I was like, oh, we can't handle it. Uh. <laughs> like, it was so good. Are oh, you moaning in front of <laughs> 2,000 people? But anyway, so for sometimes, like, I came up with the chorus first because I kept thinking about like, that what's I, funny i'm so bad at courses but that idea of like some people are here only only for a season and i thought about okay season and then sometimes people leave without giving a reason so i kept hearing those like season reason blessing lesson those are the four words that kind of jump started and was a catalyst for this entire for writing the song and so i just kept expanding on that so i tend my songwriting process in terms of lyrics i get inspired by either a theme or an emotion that i'm going through and i'll expand on that and i usually yeah, it does kind of start with the chorus a little bit. I don't. I rarely do ever get like a verse idea. That's so funny. First. I love that. So. You know, one I will do say you one, one observation with your writing that I notice is that your lyrics tend to be very matter of fact. Uh huh. You know, it's very much. This is how I'm feeling. This is I what's happening. Is. You tell yeah. it as it is, which is I I I I really admire, because I think I think I get too heady mm. when I write my lyrics. This is why I think uh, um, a, a hybrid of your type of writing yeah. and my writing makes it for such a great cohesion. Because when I write, I like to paint pictures, and I like I get to like English degree about it. So I look at like rhymes and mm -hmm. structure, and I look at internal rhymes, mm -hmm. and I look for I try to paint metaphors, mm -hmm. and and I think this could be a good thing, but I also sometimes feel like it's like my downfall because um. Yeah. I feel like sometimes I overcomplicate things. Like the song that we're gonna play you, the one that's in the show. Like if you listen to it, it it's really heavy on theme, mm -hmm. literary theme. Mm -hmm. It's really heavy on like metaphor, word, um, play. What's it called? Play of words, words of play. What is it like? Uh, play on words. Play on words. Play on words has like weird rhyme schemes, internal rhymes, and things and it like even, that. It also plays with the timing of it as yeah. well. That's not quite like in the and, pop structure. Um, and one thing that I really like to do with my writing is, I don't know if you do this, maybe you do, but for this song specifically, um, the verses 
I like to play with time in my songs. So like for this song, I believe the verses are singing through the perspective of the present. The chorus, I believe, is singing from the perspective of the future. And the pre-chorus is singing from the perspective of the past. And so if you listen to the song, like each section has a different perspective of that part of the relationship of where mm-hmm. I'm at or where I was or where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's kind of how I write. Um, yeah. Which sometimes gets exhausting because I'm thinking of multiple things all at once. And yes. that's something I, I admire about you because you have like an effortless effortlessness effortless how do you say it you're the english person effortlessness effortless to effortless to um hearing your music Hmm. and maybe because i'm separated from it right here and i'm like oh i can just take it in well the thing is is like when you are able to cross that threshold of like being so vulnerable and allowing your emotions and like the the storytelling to come out in your writing it makes it easier for anyone to step in like me to come up with music because i can feel right right i can sense where you're going with it and that's why chat, like, like, we hadn't written in years, and it maybe took us 10 minutes to kind of dust off the cobwebs, but once you're in it, we just fell into a groove. And, and I had mentioned this before when I was um, in L.A. playing Hotel Cafe. I was saying, like, there was a hesitation of feeling like, do we still got it? But, like, after 10 minutes, I was like, yeah, we still got it. Well, the thing is, like, I know I got it. I wasn't worried. <laughs> I wasn't. Well, the I... thing, also the reason why is because I know you got it. Oh. Like, I believe in you. Like, this song that we're going to play, like, he produced the whole thing. And he didn't even think he could do it. And I was like, um, I think you can. Like, I'm literally in this huge soundproof box. So obviously you can do something. And then he produced the whole song by himself. He created strings, drum beats, guitar, like ethereal, like Ooh, noises all by himself. And like, if I didn't force him to do it, yeah. he wouldn't have done it. And that's now true. he knows that he can produce music and I by thank himself. You so much. I really do. And because... I think that's a part of like the storytelling mm-hmm. again. It's like you, we we need to believe in ourselves and we need to believe that we can do things that we actually don't think we can do. Like I'm really, I'm a big believer of fake it until you make it like everyone thinks I know what I'm doing and I don't, but I will like never let you know that. Right. I'll be like, Oh yeah, I'm a professional. Like playwright. I'm yeah. Well now I am. <laughs> <laughs> or be like, you know, I'd like walk into like um, a room and be like, Oh yeah, I'm a professional model slash singer yeah yeah slash influencer yeah, and you'd yeah. believe me because i'm gonna sell it to you and yeah. it's like you know i think we have to lift ourselves up well thank you more i'm you sitting know. here being like mm, i'm so touched but no honestly like i didn't um I, I not that i didn't think i could write this song i think when you kind of like alluded to the fact like somebody needs to produce this i was like I don't, I don't know if I could do that. And then not to mention the pressure of like, hi, Derica. It's Derica. We have to say hi. Derica! Um, it's Nicholas. Okay. Oh, what did she say? Oh, she's at Esos Players. I'm not really able to listen. Okay, no worries. You can catch the replay. Um, oh, she's coming oh, she... on 6-11. Oh, June 11th. Okay, Woo-hoo. cool. Thanks for shouting out, Derica. But no, it's not that I didn't think I can write this song. I knew I could. And when I went into the process of writing with you, I said, I know there's not a guarantee that this is going to make it into the play. I just want to be able to write with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, in doing- and that's true that it was like a pitch. Yes. Yeah. Because it had to be like, like, this is my play, but does this song fit into the world that yeah. the director is building? So, and, I, and I'd never really written that way where I, I was given a structure and sort of a vibe yeah. that was kind of like this, it needs to meet this. Essentially, but those are important tools to have. I yeah, think. yeah. I, essentially, me as a songwriter has been, I've been challenged as a songwriter in that sense to um, be one of those people that have been given like specs to write to, which is normally not the way I write. I kind of like write what what's happening with me. But I'm just I'm grateful for you giving me the opportunity to to be a part of it and um, and uh, th- that we got to share a really cool moment in that sense. So. Um, I'm going to now. I think we're ready to play it. Do, does, do you want to hear the song? I, we can't play it until someone says, yes, I want to hear the song. Verb, you didn't tell me you were doing We Tried Guys today. What's that? No, that's a joke. Don't worry. Do you want me to try something? No. Yes, I want to hear the song. Just We call him Burb. He's Hey, Burb. Sup? Tell Sup. Burb. He's in L.A. Tell him to go to your show. Burb, are you He'll in L.A.? You need to come watch my show. TBP. 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 Derek is going Derek on is June going. 11th. Once your show. See, he wants it's to go already. It's now playing through June 12th. TBP. It, not C, not V. T B. as in the, B as in bottoming, T, oh, P as in process. <laughs> TBP. If you say like Filipino. It's, it's a romantic comedy. It's hella oh, funny. Guts. Okay. Gut-wrenching. Someone help him. Thank you, Coggles. Um, 
Okay, let's 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 quickly pitch the song. It's it uh, stars famous people depending on which TV shows you watch. If you're familiar with the theater world and Broadway, if um, you love Broadway, the, you might think one of them's famous. If you love the TV show no, The Flash, some people do know, you might think the wait, other hold one's on. famous. I know some people in my community know the song Michael in the Bathroom. Michael in the Bathroom is in my play. Yes, but not this Michael. No, the one in the bathroom. Yeah. So wait, so Michael's in it. Michael has a song in it. Yes, Michael he's Barnum in, wrote uh, a song with me. I mean, that I'm plays essentially in the play, Burr, but I'm not. But there's a piece of me in it. Oh, but you said someone famous. Well, depends, I mean, yes. Depends on what you're into. So, like, if you're like into Broadway, then the lead actor is famous. Yes. If you watch the well, TV have... show The Flash, yeah, then the other actor is famous to you. <laughs> If you don't, they just have like two hundred thousand Instagram followers. <laughs> you know, <and> that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, so chat, here's a world premiere. Um, never been played before to um So this song interwebs. plays at the end of the show. And um thank you. I am famous to myself and there you. you. Go. I'm not. What were you saying? Oh, no, no. I was going to say. So the song plays at the end of the show, and it's it's called Milo Song because the main character's name is Milo. And um, it's sung by the lead actor. His name is George Salazar. He's a Filipino-American um, Broadway singer and actor. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so we wrote this song for him to sing, and then we recorded it so in a dingy theater dressing room. You wouldn't. You couldn't even tell. Watch my TikTok, by and the you way, can he, see the behind the scenes. George Salazar, Broadway actor, we used my microphone here. Okay, chat, we're going to play it, and then I'm going to turn down my mic and Nicholas's mic, and then um, feel free to, like, react in the chat as you will, whatnot, ask any questions, and we'll come back and kind of hash it out. But, again, if you're joining us on the front page, my name is Michael. This is Nicholas Billipil. We're premiering um, the uh, song from his play called The Bottoming Process. This song is called Milo Song, right? I'm going to call it the Milo Song. Yes, it's called Milo Milo Song. Song. Um, And uh, Jean-Olivier, here we go. This is the fully produced... Mix mastered um, right here on the Barnable channel. Okay, Nicholas, I'm turning your mic off. Words we wrote were written as mistakes, but the story I tell. We use the lessons that I take I've closed the book, we've reached the end Torn up pages now, too strong to bend A love always in draft, always stuck in rock But my story will be bookended the heart that's tough let me write my own story let me pick up and turn the page let me start a new chapter from before to my after and unlearn our disaster and own my narrative again survived the terrain by both giving up just a little bit enough but i think we were always meant to wane an original love tried with pain your veins no longer in my veins so your face will stay burned in my brain a love always in draft always stuck my story will be bookended with a heart that's tough. Let me write my own story. Let me pick up and turn the page. Let me start a new chapter from before to my after. Let me write my own story. Let me pick up and turn the page. Let me start a new chapter from before to my Let me start a new chapter from before to my after.
What do you think? What do they say, Nicholas? What read read the of... chat. What do they say? Wow. <laughs> that was... Poggies. Poggies. Poopies. Oh, Poggies. poggies. What's Poggies mean? It's like Twitch saying that's cool. Oh. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Coggles loves it. Coggles, thank you. You're blocking me. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so the, yeah, that's the world premiere of uh, Milo's song, which can be heard at the bottoming process. Now playing, uh, now playing through June 12th in through Hollywood. June 12th in Hollywood. Hollywood. Press exclamation mark. T. B. B. P. Yes. Um, thank you, Burb. Appreciate it. Burb, Nicholas would love you forever if you went to his show. Yeah, you should come. It's so much um, fun. Derek is going on the 11th. I can take a look at my sched, but... Um, Tomorrow's Asian American night. It's pay what, pay you, what can. you can. That's There's right. There's going to be a talk back where I'm going to be answering questions live on stage. Yeah. Oh, I should do a feature on my Instagram showing that people, new viewers, can come back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay, we keep talking because I'm going to do that right now. Chicken noodle. What's chicken noodle? Chicken noodle? Yeah, is that a Twitch thing? Does that mean something? Or is that like nudes? I, I have no, not nudes. I don't know. If it's a burb, just, it's questionable. Oh, pay what you can. That just means like you can pay a dollar or you could pay like a thousand dollars. Y'all, we are live right now on Twitch like, and we're on the front page. Yeah. To almost 3,000 viewers right now. Right? It does still so come sound hang with crisp us. like he's in Be More Chill. Exactly. He's so good in this show, by the way. Like, if you're familiar with who he is from Be More Chill, like, he's the literal lead of the show. He's not playing the best friend. And it's actually quite empowering for me. Is that me? Oh, shit. I have to take this. Okay. Um, I will. No worries. Take it. <laughs> Duty calls. Duty calls. Um, okay. Chat. Thank you so much. Um. Oh, so no cans of chicken noodle soup. Sounds still as crisp as when he is in the Be More Chill. Oh my gosh. I know you're like a, you're a big fan of Be More Chill, Jean Olivier. Yeah, so, okay, crazy is like a few weeks ago, I was in some like small little storage room at the theater with Nicholas and we were recording uh, George Salazar on this here microphone. And let me tell you, chat, it was like, I mean, you, it's the epitome of like using the tools that you have. And it was, we were just had like a laptop, this microphone, and then this little board thing. And uh, yeah, I had, I had built the track myself. This is so weird to sit in this place of like production, if you will. Um, but I, I, I made the drums. I, that's me playing on the guitar. I um, essentially came up with like the melody and the chord structure of the song along, you know, with Nicholas's help and built the string arrangement that you hear at the end. Uh, so, yeah, it was produced by yours truly. That's so weird to say. Um, but yes. OK, hold on. I hope everything's OK. Um, thank you all so much for, for tuning in. Appreciate it. Thank you for all the love. Be sure to smash that follow button if you haven't already. Uh, my name is Michael. I am a creative story, story like creative storyteller, um, Asian American, uh, Filipino American singer, songwriter, music streamer, if you will. But tonight we're not music streaming. We're talking about music and the art of storytelling. Broadway next, Coggles. I mean, who knows? You know. So the thing about what's really exciting for Nicholas's play is that because it's a world premiere, like it can go anywhere. You know, it's not one of those things that's already been established and it's only playing in certain places um i really hope that it takes on a life of its own and other people do other productions of it and that it maybe makes its way down to broadway or even a big regional theater uh company or something like that um because i do feel that his work is that great to be recognized by those people it's just a matter of um him getting you know this this work getting that exposure if you will Okay, uh, any questions that y'all might have in the chat as I sh um, awkwardly um, uh, stall, <laughs> if you will. Uh, I know it's um, 
it's a Sunday night, and I can't believe that we're almost done with May. It's going to be June. This is insane. Uh, but thank you to Twitch for featuring us uh, on the front page. At one point, we almost had 3,000 viewers, which is insane. Thank you, Coggles, for modding. I appreciate it. Ninja, I'm not sure if you're still in here. Amelia, I saw you. You're, uh, you're hanging out, uh, kind of lurking because you are late for work, which makes sense. 3,132? Oh, my gosh. Oh, you are here, Ninja. Ninja, any questions for yours truly and or my friend Nicholas? Um, yeah, again, if you're in Los Angeles, uh, check out this play called The Bottoming Process. It is playing at the LGBTQ Center in Los Angeles. We are giving you 20% off tickets just for y'all here on Twitch. We built a promo code just for y'all, okay? Use the promo code FANFAN, that's F-A-N-F-A-N, at checkout to get 20% off your tickets. And again, the deal is is that if um, one of the f first few uh, y'all that buys a ticket, uh, and you have to be in person and show up in person because I only, can only give you the shirt in person, but I'm, we're throwing in a shirt. We QVC'd this thing, so if you want to take part in that, um, you'll have to purchase a ticket, screenshot it, tag me somewhere. Nope, wish I was in LA. I know, Ninja. I know if you were here, you'd be down but i i think i really want to organize like a barnable night or something like that because Derek uh, um is in la and, and wants to see the show burb maybe <laughs> but if you're into like you know live performance theater specifically or just want to kind of open your mind up to other ways of storytelling even if you've never been to a play this might be a great way to kind of um, get you into that especially if you identify and and um, are part of the Asian American community I think our our stories matter so much especially in this very special time right now and it's important that we amplify and we support other creators and other people that are telling their stories and their truth like Nicholas had mentioned um, which he has boldly done uh, to to um, to share with the world to help you know, people find themselves in this story. Amelia, I've never been, never, you've never been to a play. Amelia, um, can't guarantee that we'll be taking this show on the road just yet. But when we do, definitely. Um, Burb, I was saying, if you want to go to the show, we should uh, organize like a, a Barnable night, if you will. Um, I have some snippets from our from Nicholas's and I, our um, our, our songwriting process, if you will. Uh, disgusting! Can't believe you never come to Sweden, Amelia. Listen, I'm not a producer of the show. I was just a songwriter or a creative. That was, you know, I didn't even know I was gonna be part of the creative team until just a few weeks ago. So excuse moi, Amelia. Um, okay. I want to play this. A little snippet from uh, our um, songwriting process, so you you get a sense chat of of how Nicholas and I work. Uh, but this particular moment, let me find it. This particular moment is when I was coming up with the pre-chorus that you hear um, that you just heard a few minutes ago. Love always in draft, always stuck in rough. That part. This is when I was. Uh, like coming up with the the melody, if you will, and this is the moment. Jekyll and Hyde. This is the moment I caught, um, what was to be the uh, the actual melody. Because prior to this, maybe just a few minutes in the writing process, I just have fun fact. Are you good? Yeah. Okay. Oh, put this. I'm about to share that one little tidbit. I was stalling while you were. He's so busy. He's probably his agent or something. Um. Oh, sorry. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Under, over, under, over. Okay. We're trying to organize a Barnable Night um, in L.A. But I was saying that uh, in a writing process, um, I oh, that. I like to, um, I just like to have a, um, a recording, which is a great tip if anybody is, is especially songwriting, just start recording on your phone because you never know when you're going to, you're going to strike gold and you don't want to be the person that forgets what you just did. And you'll have a way to record and go back to it. So always record, even if you don't think it's going to be great. Because I 
I'm so glad I did. And I caught this very special moment. But anyway, so this is, I just set it up, the clip. Um, this is when I, Nicholas and I were writing the pre-chorus of it. And Ooh, there's 3,000 of you. Yeah. Sup, Let's bro. go. <laughs> Imagine three thousand people at the bottoming process. I mean, that would that would sell out the entire run and more. Maybe N- not enough. Yeah. Oh my god! Honestly, if y'all went, I would like lose my mind. Oh, you would literally have them on the floor crying. Honestly, I would, like crying from laughter and tears. Yes, someone has to be from Los Angeles. Someone has. To, if you're from LA and you're on the front page right now, you're from LA. You like plays. You identify as Asian American, even if you don't, or you just want to support. Um, voices from this community i encourage you or even okay if you're not from so, here yes go on my instagram and just share the production photos oh, or yeah. go on my instagram and look at the production photos the show looks amazing yeah because if we can't if we can't get you you to come sh- to the show because what for whatever reason just if you can reshare the story or whatever um it's the, on the grid okay on the grid anyway um, Nicholas Command. Uh, so this is that clip. This is me kind of figuring out the pre-chorus and um, Nicholas's reaction to that moment. Here we go. Yes. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. Oh no, what I just did I'm bad recording. Oh, are you recording? Yeah. No, good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love uh, that. <laughs> One more time because the scream is just it's so good. You can eat, if you if you can hear the bat in the background Nicholas is kind of like making little <gasps> These moments, and that's when you know, especially when I'm writing them, I know I'm we're headed to the right direction because he starts to be ex- more expressive in his reactions. But again, here we go. It's my favorite part of this process. <laughs> my voice, mind you, mind you, I had an audition the next day, and I was I sacrificed my the nature of my voice to write with him, and then he had the audacity to ask me, "Can you actually like record?" vocals and record the guitar track for me before you leave it was almost 1 a.m but then he couldn't do it so then i so then he had to do it because i didn't have a voice and it was so bad like i'm not a singer so bad if um we get back to 3,000 um viewers i will what's up first time chatter hello welcome in this is my name's michael this is nicholas um this is a song we wrote (laughs) that should be clipped Coggles, and Nicholas is scream. <laughs> yeah. I anyway, love. but um, so as I was saying, if we get back to three thousand viewers, I will play you my demo. You have it with you? I think so. Don't leave them on. You might. No, I think I have it. I'll play it. Okay, chat. Back to three thousand viewers, and Nicholas will reveal his demo. You had me. He had me. Um, because his version wasn't good enough it's to send up thing. It, so he he sent me home to like re- re-record everything myself. With like an electric guitar, I started building a string arrangement because he was like, "You can produce this." I'm like, "I don't know if I can do." He's like, "Yes, you can," and I re-recorded and with whatever voice I had to to create a lead vocal for George to learn and sing to on recording day. So imagine me giving playing my demo mm. for a literal award-winning Broadway singer, being <laughs> like, "Hey, this is a song I wrote for you to sing. Here's this little." brown boy who sings like he's Maggie Rogers. <laughs> that is such a great idea. We were Coggle's idea. What? We need that scream as an alert. <laughs> Your voice. When you sc- that one? Yeah, every time like someone donates or something. Yeah, do it. <laughs> work. <laughs> we'll work on that. I think we do that. What does Amelia say? I can't read. Oh, that's to Coggle's. Do you want to have a heart attack while potentially walking to work in the dark mornings in the winter? Oh, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, that scream is brilliant. It's great, Amelia. Right? Hello, um, LOL Smith. Lol. Hi, LOL Smith. Smith four twenty three. Hello. Thank you for joining us from oh the my front God. page. We're at two nine eight nine. Let's go. Three thousand, and Nicholas we will reveal. We Twitch. We literally need eleven. That's eleven, right? Eleven, and then we'll play my demo. Let, wait, he, he refresh. Three thousand viewers, and then you better get that demo ready because it's gonna okay. happen. Okay, I'll pull it up. It's so bad though. Well, you you told them. Yeah, because I want to have more viewers. I oh, <laughs> we did it. It's I, three thousand. I'm I'm a W H O R E. I'm willing to put out for what I want. Oh well, okay. 
Here's the, here's the aux cord. All right, let me find it. Let's see if he has it. 3,147 to be exact. Work, work. Okay. B words. We went through like 25 versions of this song. Is this one mine or is this one yours? I don't know, but whatever it's going to play, they're going to hear. They, sh they should hear yours and then mine. Okay. Yeah. Is that you? Can you hear? Yeah, this one's me. So okay, okay, rewind it. Set it up. Set the clip. Okay, so <laughs> you all, a lot of you probably have heard the real version sung by George Salazar. Now we're going to play my <laughs> demo version. The playwright. We're going to play my demo version of the song that I wrote. Okay. And then we're going to play Michael's demo version with his damaged vocal noted chords. Oh, my God. Excuse. They're, and then. There are no nodes, as yeah, far as I know. Oh, my God. Rick posted rude. it on opening night. He's, like, the sweetest. Rick is amazing. He, Jean-Olivier, are you in L.A.? He's wonderful. And he's so amazing in Come the show. Come through. He's so good. Okay, we're going to play this How song. How can we get. Do you have George's number? He should, does he have a Twitch? I don't know. He should tune in. That'd be so cool. Have a Broadway actor in our chat. Okay. Um, setting the clip up. Um, did you press play already? Yeah. Girl. Oh, shoot. Oh, I'm turning playing. you down. <laughs> no. um, did you press play already? Yeah. Oh, shoot. It's I'm us turning playing. you down. Wait, I can hear us. Huh? But the no, story this. of oh. town is the lessons that I take. I've closed the book, we reach the end. So ugly. Turn up pages now to strong to bend. A love always in draft, always stuck in rough. But my story will begin with a heart. Start a new chapter from before to my after And I'll learn our disaster and own my narrative again Why couldn't love have been enough? We could have survived the terrain Giving up just a little bit enough But I think we were always meant to wane An original love tried with pain Your vein no longer in my veins Though your face will stay burning He's, he's cringing, he's cringing, he's cringing You asked for this <laughs> You wanted this You wanted this That was rough. <laughs> that was. You asked for it. You asked. Yeah, you because I want three thousand viewers. That was giving like open mic in um, a city with no good singers. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna play Michael's version. No, we need to get to a better number for me. No, we're gonna play your version. Three thousand one hundred people. <laughs> what number are we at, Coggles? I want a good number before we play. What do you mean, good number? Good number of viewers to hear me. Okay, fine. You put that. Coggles, there. give me a number. Hi, Jamie. Ja what did Jamie say? Jamie said it's really good. Thank you, Thank Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Are you my That's agent? <laughs> my agent's name is Jamie. <laughs> Shout out to your agent. Three thousand eight. Okay. 
All right. Been to the year 3000. Um, again, if you're just joining uh, Jamie, especially, this is my best friend, Nicholas Pilipil. He is a award-winning Filipino-American playwright, songwriter, <sighs> Chardonnay lover. Oh, yeah. If you go to YouTube.com and search my name, I have a wonderful song called Chardonnay. It's a pop opera electro That's based on? Based off of my talent. But also it was taking inspiration from Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Kimmy Schmidt yeah, yeah. with Titus Burgers. Um, Jean-Olivier. Jean-Olivier. We need you here. You'd be great to come to this show. Yeah. Okay, let's play mine. Okay, we're going to play Michael Barnum's. I'm better than your agent, says Jamie. <laughs> Michael Ooh. Barnum's um, version of Milo's song. Okay. This is, uh, mind you, this is um, the lead guide vocal. Okay, okay, so also, is my mic on? Is my mic on? You're, yeah, okay, you're on. so at the end, we have to vote. Who is everyone's favorite? Oh, is. my God. Okay, Coggles, get ready for a poll. So it's his or mine. Whose version do you like better? And, yeah. Get you could ready. throw Taylor in there as well. She probably has one. <laughs> Get ready, Taylor. Who's Taylor? Swift? Taylor Swift, yeah. Wait, is this the lead guide vocal? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's play it. Let's play it. I'm going to leave our mics on. Okay. Here it is. This is it. You don't know if Michael's the one yet. Of course, Jamie. The words we wrote were written as mistakes. The story I'll tell Use the lessons that I take I've closed the book We've reached Actually, it sounds one. Good. This is it! That's not Nicholas That's Stop. not it! That's not it! This sounds is now too strong This is a different version. Bend. I don't know what version this is. Well, but, yeah, the, the good one. That's not the good one. Things. Which That's one are you talking about? That's the only one I have. That's... Oh, wait, is it, wait, is it this one? Wait, maybe it's this one. That's not the one. Which one is it? It's lead guide vocal. Oh, I don't have that one saved here. This is all I have. Okay, fine, fine. I'll find it. Open my... it in the emails. That's not the right one. It sounds like Kermit. Thank you, Jamie. Kermit the Frog here. Jamie, I'm going through a vocal injury, just so you know, okay? Um, it's lead guide vocal, but only gave George. This is, you shouldn't be able to hear this one. <laughs> Well, it's a little more produced. Can you just search lead guide vocal? This one, yeah? Okay. This. Lead vocal guide. Thank you. Jean-Olivier, we apologize for the inconvenience. Oh, no, this one might be worse. <laughs> I like this one and I tolerate it. Excuse you. Okay, go. I knuckle. Are you playing it? It's loaded. <laughs> Words we wrote were written as mistakes But the story I'll tell Will use the lessons that I take I've closed the book, we've reached the end Torn up pages now, too strong to bear a love always in draft, always stuck in rough. But my story will be begun with the heart that's tough. Let me write my own story. Let me pick up and turn the page. Let me start a new chapter from before to my after. And unlearn our disaster and earn my narrative. Why couldn't love happen enough? We could have survived the terrain by both giving up just a little bit enough. But I think we will always be. Unoriginal love, trapped with pain, your pain no longer in my brain. So your face will stay burned in my brain. A love all 
always in draft Always stuck in rough But my story will be bookended With the heart that's tough Let me write my own story Let me pick up and turn the page Let me start a new chapter from before to my after We did 30 100. Let's Hi, go, baby. Am I on? Can you hear me? Can yes, you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. They can hear you. One, that's not a competition because mine was raw demo. His was produced demo. <laughs> so there's that. Also, I vote for his version. It was really good. <laughs> second, I don't know what the second one was, but I really love those harmonies. It was really delicious. Oh, this is what it was. What did they say? They said, initiate key change. Michael has done an epic key change 97 times on this stream. Did, yeah. This song only has a key change because of me. Because I'm greedy and I love a key change. No, you wanted your Mariah moment. I, is that's what, what he said. I said I wanted my Mariah moment because this is a Mariah moment song. This is a mom. This is a moment. Yeah, it's a moms. Mariah moment a moms. song. Oh, moms. Excuse me. Okay, go ahead and vote, chat. Who sung it no, better? No, there's no competition. You won. I vote for you because it was unfair. Because you got my raw, emotional, pure-hearted, broken-hearted, raw demo. And then you, Charlie, poofed yourself and, like, <laughs> like camouflage your vocal fry <laughs> with harmonies <laughs> and stacks. Oh, my God. It was, but it was really good. It was so good. Thank you. It was really good. I appreciate it. That was amazing. But well, I do want to see what people vote for, though. You can watch it in real time. I mean, they can vote. Let's see. People might vote for you. Look, you got two Oh, my votes. God. Am I winning? Look at you. You're winning. Work. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks. Thank we should you. have, like, a Nicholas sound effect. <laughs> we just, that just screams every time. Coggles. What did Amelia say? You, you can't Wait, I need that. to document this before you start winning. So, I'm not. Like, you're winning. No you one vote again. Points. Okay, cool. Work. You're going to win. Look. It's two to three. It's like watching. Thank you. The election it is a curly really. scream. I also have fat fingers. So. <laughs> what? No, Jamie and I have fat fingers and we like hit the wrong person. Okay. You're going to win. Look, there's like less than a minute left. Yeah, Nicholas. but can you hit the note live? <laughs> what note? I don't know. No. Nah, no. See, I can hit it live and I don't have to prove it. <laughs> he was like getting you couldn't hear this chat but during that playback he was like oh vocal damage he's making fun of my vocal ness you're gonna win alright you have to make an acceptance speech work oh my god I won a singing competition I'm amazing <laughs> this is perfect for his ego chat so keep boosting Um, I would just like to thank the voice teacher I had one day who said that I'm a tenor because I talk like a girl um, it really made me think um, I could be a wonderful angel in Rent, a show that Michael Barnum has never seen. Um, I would also like to thank um, Ashley Simpson, who you beat George and I, who is um, an underrated singer and one of my faves. I would also like to thank um, my mom and God. No, I don't believe in ties. I'm sorry. You don't believe in what? Ties. I don't wear them. I don't vote for them. I think that people need to lose. Okay. Yeah, they do. Amazing. Is this song out on Spotify? Tell them. It's yeah. not out on Spotify. We'll see one day. But right now, the only way to hear the song <laughs> is to watch my show. <laughs> <laughs> You got like the exclusive. But, yeah. Like literally. I, you, I will never play it for y'all ever again. Yeah. You have to come to the show. Now. You have to watch me play. Exclamation. It makes much more sense when you're T there in context. B 
P. I voted for Michael, so it should have been three to three. Oh, thanks, Jamie. I well, appreciate it. And we, Jamie, I got your text. She's like, I'm sorry, I didn't know you had vocal text. <laughs> <laughs> you need to read his essay called The Barnumals Bailey. What's it called? The Ballad of Barnum. Uh, read the essay, The Ballad of Barnum. It's about how he's losing. You read it? He's losing his voice. No, they have to read it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jamie, go to my Instagram story, click the highlight. It's the Ballad of Barnum. It's very. That, I didn't name it that. It's that scene of Hilary Duff singing um, in Raise Your Voice. <laughs> You're so mean. La, 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 You're la, so la, mean. La, la, la. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> la, 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 la. We like yeah. literally broke it down la, on chat. Like I try to learn it. <laughs> la. And down to the part where she messes la, up. La, la. <laughs> <laughs> That's so he's so mean, but that's how you know that um that he loves me. Uh, okay, so that's the bottoming process. That is uh, Milo's song. Again, if you're in L.A. or Hollywood, come to the play. It's playing until June twelfth. Hi, Sunflower. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Michael. If you're on the front page, this is Nicholas Philippil. We are both Filipino American storytellers, creative storytellers. There's a delay. I know because. Because that's just how internet works. Go. Thank you, Coggles, for uh, shouting, uh, giving a hug to Sunflower and shouting out Sunflower. Oh, you want to know about my shirt? My shirt says, "We are you are worth the risk. It is a lyric from the Michael Barnum hit single, The Nook. Almost 200,000 streams on Spotify. Streaming on Spotify. If you press exclamation merch, merch. you can buy one. Or you can, buy. you can buy a ticket to my show and then get one for free. Yes, anyone in LA, if you buy a ticket to the show, you tag me or Nicholas and like either of us. You buy it today with that code. Send me a screenshot, tag me. I will personally hand you a shirt, or I will if I can't be there, I will give it to Nicholas to give to you in person. You know who else worked who? on Milo's song, the song in my play, Michael Alvarado. That's true. Layers. Yes. It's like hella twitched. That song is twitched. <laughs> I couldn't see it. The screen is stand up, work it. Here, model it. Here we go. There it is. Oh, it's so good. Look at that. You're like she's stretching. It's great for here. I'll sell it. Yes, the uh, the you are worth the risk shirt is very good. It's it's the softest, comfiest, coziest shirt. What? <laughs> I'm highlighting the words. No, no, I thought you were your like nipples. What you were doing? My nipples are cloudy. Like they're little poofs. The line was like, your nipples are pink. <laughs> yes. Blackout. <laughs> um, but yes, it's available now on the merch store. Um, these are, they're cozy. They're the, one of the coziest shirts you'll ever, ever, ever put on your body. Oh my. Yeah, Coggles. Anything for the front page with Nicholas. It's great for fashion. It's great for sleeping. Is it, what does it say? Is crew. it as soft as the crew t-shirts? They're softer, Jamie. Crew? Yeah. Crew who? You know why these are soft? Because it's Asian American History Month, and this one's made <gasps> in Asia. CNLA, CNLA. That is um, made up of Ashley and Courtney, and Ashley is oh, uh, part Filipino, and they're musicians. I know musicians. Ashley. I talked to her on this Twitter. Is, this is my best friend, Nicholas. Hi. And he's a playwright. Courtney, Ashley, do you want to see an amazing play? I think I forced Ashley to post about my show in a newsletter. Ashley, <laughs> Ashley, go see the bottoming process of the LGBTQ <laughs> Center playing through June 12th. Please ah, support. They're support. coming. Work, sis. Wait, what day? I'll oh my god, I want to go. Wait, yeah, wait. You come with them. Um, Courtney Ashley. Uh, the deal is, is if you purchase tickets through here, um, yeah, and use sure. the code and tag me or just screen. You have my number. Um, I will throw in a shirt. A free Michael Barnum shirt. Yes. We will. We will. We promise. Okay. Well, let me know what day because I low key want to go and a shirt. Yeah, and then use the code FANFAN. You got to use the code FANFAN at checkout, and then I will somehow get a shirt to you. You get one of these shirts. Just let me know your size. I got small, medium, large, extra large, and so on. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like the shirt, you can resell it. (laughs) It's my merch. Yeah, you made the money already. Actually, no, because we're giving away (gasps) Oh, it's Julia. We love Julia. She's from the East Coast. Hi, Julia. 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 Can we wear them to the show together? (gasps) Yes, I literally wore mine today. See? Yeah, I didn't wear mine, but it was so sweet because he showed up to my house because we carpooled, and he wore. I was like, "Oh my god, you're wearing the shirt, my shirt!" And I just I work. I know, lost it. But Ashley, Courtney, Ashley, you're invited. you should come to Filipino Night. It's hosted by Film Arts. You all should come to Filipino Night. When There's is a, that? It's June third. 
the app for that one um it's hosted by phil and marks oh. and there's like a pre-show with drinks and then it's the show and then there's a post-show panel with like me and other like phil Ams. i don't know there you go and ashley i'm assuming that's you um oh you want my shirt instead oh ooh, dm want... me what i'll give it to you <laughs> What's the, this actual like this shirt that you sweat in? Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's that's creepy. Anyway, I'm not actually, opposed. Nicholas is somebody you're gonna want to network with because he writes for everything, um, and they're they're filmmakers. So I write lies. Mm-hmm. I write. We wrote wrongs. a song for the show as well. The one that I played, um, Ashley, on at Hotel Cafe last week. This is this is that person that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. I'm fangirling, but. Yeah, you missed it. I don't know if you're here, but we played the real song, <laughs> sung by George Salazar, Phil Am, George Salazar. Mm-hmm. And then we say we played my demo <laughs> of my non-singing, but singing. <laughs> and then we played Michael's version, which was fully produced, not a demo at all. <laughs> it was not well. And then it was like, vote for which one's the best, the unfinished you demo. You won. You won. I know, but still. One person said they voted for me by mistake. And that's how you get wrong president. Oh, so Jamie says, be- I didn't mean the shirt you were wearing. I was asking about the merch. Oh. <laughs> Just all beautiful music. But I yes. still want to give it to you. <laughs> he's, the, he's the source of all my success, really, Ashley. I'm not. Uh, not, I'm not. Yeah, he's like my Asian tiger mom. You know, like the, you know, the Filipino mom that tells you as it is. But, like, honestly, like, he has encouraged me to... He's the reason why I'm here, streaming music and making music, because... When I was like a beat to boy, I didn't believe in myself in that sense. He was like, "You need to be writing original music." I was like, "I don't know if I'm good." That's enough. actually true, and you need to t- you need to also tell him because I know some of you are fans of him. Oh, when he's singing covers, you need to tell him to stop. <laughs> also, he does this thing that I hate. He's like, um, "I'm gonna play an original song." It's like, no, it's just a song. Like, you don't hear Taylor Swift going, "I'm gonna sing an original song now." She's like, "I'm gonna sing you a song." Goodbye. So you just need to be like, "I'm singing a song. Goodbye. It is my song." Thank you. You know, saying original songs for, like, people who are, like, don't sing original songs. Like, own it and say, I'm playing music. Because your music is just music. It doesn't always have to be my, like, enter adjective here music. You know what I'm saying? Uh Uh-huh. And you have so many songs. Oh, my God. That you could just, you could literally do, like, a three-hour set of your own (gasps) songs. Mama Tamago is also from here. Mama Tamago. Mama. See? There's no wrong. And your music is bad. Mm, there, mm, I, mm, That's maybe a first one time or chatter. It's fine. Maybe one or two. <laughs> 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 I think one of them's the one. Ah, stop. No, one of the no, bad. One it. of the bad ones. <laughs> stop. No, now. listen to me. One of the bad. Actually, two of the bad oh, ones my God. are on the first album. Yeah. One of them I wrote by myself. So, that's on me. <laughs> and the other one, and he knows this. I told him. He, like, wrote one verse and then repeated the chorus for two minutes. And I was like, cop out. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Mama Tom ago. This is my best friend, Nicholas Pilipo. He's an award-winning American, Filipino-American playwright, songwriter. Um, we're inviting you, if you're in the L.A. area, to come to his play. It's called The Bottoming Process. It's playing now through June 12th at the LGBTQ Center in Los Angeles. I just came back watching. This is my second time watching literally like in sobbing in tears. tears at the end Sobs. of the show but um yeah uh you uh should come and watch and if you want to hear th- those bad songs that i'm talking about it's called get it right you should play Stop. it you should play it because i actually still make a lot of money on that because all the writing royalties go to me <laughs> yeah stream the crap out of you want to support him yeah. um but uh anyway so i'm actually trying to organize you love him right we need more of him um, I'm trying to organize like a barnable night. Maybe we can find a day where we all can go. And we're all gonna wear these shirts. That'd be so cute. Yeah, we already, we already agreed. Where, where, where are you? You know what? You own that very well. Respect says Sab- Sabaga. Thank oh, you. you know, no, he'll have me I guess live again because I'm Thank gonna. Thank you. Hi, him. welcome in. By the way, if you're new, let's go. Um, and now Michael won't ever be a guest on again. No, it's just it's the Nicholas show now. Yeah, Nicholas but if you're from LA, um, press exclamation T TV? as in the. B as in bottoming, bottoming. P as, as in, in process. process, and it's gonna give you info <laughs> about the show, and then you're going to come. Jamie, all these people would say that they would be here, but they're not. They would go if they were here. I know. That's the thing. I know. Someone out there want to buy a flight. Like, so, like, if you if you're not from here, go to my Instagram. Yes. 
Um, Nicholas, uh, come in. Uh, coggles, please. Yes. And then the first photo on my grid is production photos. You can just look at what the show looks like from there. And then share it on your Instagram stories. Ding. Yes. Uh, Mama Tama Go, um, if you buy a ticket and you use that code and you screenshot your ticket thing, I will throw in a shirt. Just let me know what your size is when we get there. But... Does anyone have any question for me about him? I'm so no. Oh my god. Does anyone want to know my opinion on him about? I don't know. I feel well, like did you should you open up questions? Is that a thing? You, I feel like you just opened Pandora's box. Yeah. How long have y'all been friends? Oh okay. I met Michael Barnum in college when we were working backstage crew on a musical called Nine. I think this was in 2010. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, oh my god, he thought I was crazy yep. because I kept sitting on the floor the on carpet, rugs, and I would pick up the corner of the and rugs, and I would sing a whole new world <laughs> by myself. I'd be like, mm-hmm. and he'd be like, what the fuck, Juliet? Don't even. And then you know, and then like, so we were in. Tech. I got it's an like, embarrassing it's story. It's crazy. For you. And then my next thing, the thing I did the next day was I would sing Phantom of the Opera, like soprano, the soprano. Parts. Better hold the mic back if you're gonna sing that high note. And then so he'd be like, oh my god. This person is nuts. And then we went to Whole Foods for lunch, and I accidentally drove over a planter. And he was like, oh, I can't be friends with that person. And, and then, was at that moment that I knew I was going to be best friends with yeah. him forever. And then what? Then we were back. Mind you, that was my first time getting into his car with a stranger to no, go no, no, get no. food. And then, and then, so I... I was singing the whole weekend and like I literally thought I was amazing. And then we were in the wings backstage and then he started singing and I was like I was like, "Wait, you're actually a good singer." And I was jealous and mad. <laughs> and now we write songs. That's my first memory of you, but I actually don't know when we became friends. Those are all my first memory of you, but I don't actually don't know. That what... for me is when you drove over the parking thing oh, really? and we became friends. Cool, cool, cool. Because you were nice enough to take me like to take us into your car and be like, Yeah, come with me and we're going to Whole Foods and get some food. What's and really... I also learned that he was vegan. He's vegan. What's really weird is like I remember you two in that class because like I oh, didn't God. talk to anybody, but you didn't talk to anybody. Because I'm a loner. But also I thought I, like we were in theater school and I was like I was like, why is this guy a theater major? Like, that's weird. Because, like, he's, like, a Filipino nerdy kid. And I was like, what does he do? Like, are you a costume designer? Because, like, he oh can't my... be an actor. No. <laughs> and then you were an actor. But, like, it was weird seeing, like, you there. Because you looked like you probably, like, would get all A's. And you were at Long Beach because it was your backup school. And you couldn't get into USC for business. Oh, like, talks me. But, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So that's how we met. An embarrassing story. Um, do you have one about me? Do I have an embarrassing story about you? Uh, ho- hold on. Well, you better say it before I do, because uh, whoever gets to it first is the one who's going to say it. Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. Embarrassing story about you. Hmm. One time? No, I have one. <laughs> I have one. Let me go. Let me go. Uh, so one time, I like I somehow dared Nicholas to do like an open mic or whatever. And we decided- <laughs> You know it's good. Stop. Ah! Burst their eardrums. You're gonna burst their eardrums. Hold on. I can't do it. So it's I, so I dare him. So, yeah, they're gonna burst their eardrums. You're gonna like get us off the front page. Hi, Hermione. He loves. He's a Potter fan as well. Anyway, so I dared him to do like an open mic, right? Because you don't want to encourage. Like you know, get out there more. And he decided to play his ook or whatever. An original song. An original song. Was an original song. But was he was so song. nervous, and he wears glasses <laughs> that he gets when he gets so nervous that his he starts to perspirate <laughs> and his glasses started to fog up so you could literally legitimately see his his like his shoulders were like far up he's like hi i ha- I, I can write this song i don't really know how it goes but like i'm gonna try it and he's like no, 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 i'm playing and his glasses like fogging up <laughs> until you can't even see his face anymore and he was dripping so wet <laughs> i like, think i dripping. even stopped and said i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> And he was so embarrassed, but I was like, as his friend, I was like, you're doing great. But I couldn't see his eyes anymore because it was like all fogged up because he was nervous. In my defense, it was a like a bootleg cement theater and everyone was sweating. Where was that? That was at the, what do you call that? That's where we play, I played yeah. I for the first time in front of people. Yes, was it was. That's was why that? I did it because. Oh, Periscope days. That's right. See, I'm not such a good friend. The reason why I did it because he was playing live in front of people for the first time too. And I oh, was please, like, don't even make and it. I was like, yeah, I'll do it with you. And a non-musician played a white girl ukulele singing a quirky song like and sweated out. out in front of, a, like, 50 people. 
so I could support my best friend in making his live debut. And then he turns around and uses it against me. Excuse me, you're about to drag me into the mud. <laughs> okay, so that's my embarrassing story of Nicholas. Um, which ultimately I'm going to put on like uh, it was a happier note because that was the moment. He's the one that encouraged me to do that. He's like, I found this open mic. We're going to go oh, that's to this. that's true. And that's where I played I Try, my first original song in front right. of the crowd. Yes. And that's literally the catalyst that led to me being like, oh. Stream I Try. I not get only people, too. Not only do I affect people like through the internet, through my music, but I can affect people in a room with my music because people came up and was like, oh, my God, that song that means so much to me. So. I actually don't know if I have any embarrassing stories. I hope stories your embarrassing story you. ends with something happy. Go no, ahead. I think I think it's like, it's embarrassing, but it's more embarrassing on the person who you did it with. But like, if you search Alana Kane, <laughs> oh, they already know. Okay, yeah, that's embarrassing. I showed them, but it's not because of you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of her. No, I did. I did. We watched it together. Some of y'all Barnumals, when I showed you that, like, really, like, um very like cringe video of me singing that like Demi Lovato song. He was in a production. Nazi! He Nazi's was- here! Hi. Hi, Nazi! He was a- in a production of The King and I where he was We're in- roasting each other with, the- with like the most he embarrassing was- moment. He was in literal yellow face and he's Asian and he was still in yellow face. Me and Nazi watched it. You and- were eating? Yeah, we, 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 we were so, Nazi and I were so offended by this yellow face production of The King and I that he was in. Like literally everyone was white except for him. That Nazi and black. I brought like a picnic from Whole Foods and decided <laughs> as a protest we were going to eat it in the theater obnoxiously to let all the white people know we weren't okay with it but to let Michael know that with our bodies we're here to support him and then I remember after the show I wrote an email to the theater being like you guys are so wrong for this <laughs> yeah okay in my defense I didn't know that I was going to be part of a yellow face production of the king and well, I well anytime anyone does the king and I is going to be like yellow face at that point it was like 2015 okay Mama time ago, please forgive me. I would never stand for that. But and you know why I was extra offended because I actually made my Broadway debut in The King and I with Donna Murphy in the '90s. So I was like, um, You're wrong. A Broadway kid. Yeah. Yeah. He's from. Hi, Sean. Chan. Did they even? No, respond? they did never respond. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this the story goes is I auditioned for the show and I was in the room with the creative team and I got booked and blessed in the room like that's how great they I was. They were like, oh, finally an Asian. We. F- <laughs> Because they they paired us with they paired me with Caitlin and we had such great chemistry together because you know we're just amazing at what we do and they're like oh that's it y'all are y'all are top Tim and 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 Lunta and then first rehearsal came by and um what I thought was the director also was the king so I was like oh oh you're playing the king as well you're not Asian Red flag. you're Asian Caucasian my favorite song that Michael Barnum sings. <laughs> Um, you can't cancel my uh, us if Michael joins. Right now, I'm really into Sometimes. I think it's his most fun song. Like it's yeah, it's it it's his his most song that's different. Yeah. I think my favorite song is I Try. Please also welcome to the stage Nazi Nasir, who has cried at I Try. That's the reason why we kept writing music is because that person right there, Nazi Nasir, call her out. Um, she cried when we sang I Try. Nazi, we're, if I'm going down, I'm taking on everyone with me. So. I also think my favorite song of yours might be Universe. Mm, Coco's Loves I Try. Thank you. <laughs> I was a part of that one. But I like Universe because I didn't have any part of it and I thought it was really good. Yeah. Yes. I, universe is like probably my favorite. Now it's time for The Shade. I don't like the re-record of Universe. Oh, okay. You don't like 2.0? No, it, okay. it's not a 2.0. It's a negative .0. He the said original what he one, said. The original one was so good that when you released that album, I'm like, why did you re-record this? He said what he said. I was like, it's not bad. I was just like, why did you try to redo something amazing but not make it more amazing? <laughs> he said what he said. <laughs> okay. And you wow, know, Nick. And you know that, again, like, at the end, because like I know him and I know what he can do when I heard it. I was like, this is a fun version, but I was like, cop out. He didn't want to write an extra song. And where's the lie? Exactly. No words. He could have written an extra song. He didn't want to. Mm-hmm. But Universe is my favorite song because it's so good. It's so good. Forget me wanting a shirt. Can you know why it's so good? Can we? It's because if you listen to the lyrics of it, it's like it's such, such a beautiful picture that he paints in like of universe. Yeah, oh. like you're. It's like layered with like emotion, but also picture painting and like 
metaphor, but also I love the breakdown in like the second verse. Like it's real. It has like many things, and it's so good. Mama time ago, read it. Yeah, for sure. I'll be back. Um, yeah, it's his stream now. Mama time ago. He has a Twitch. You want to follow? I don't even know how to log in. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> You're on on Twitch as Darby Milo. Yeah, that yeah. Darby Milo is my um my songwriting name. That like I went through a phase um where I would we need a register where I would write raps on TikTok. I did. Whatever. I put it on under um BMI? my BMI. But what did you name it? Milo song. Oh okay. Did you put me under? It? Yes. Oh, Don't worry. I did a fifty loyalties. split. Loyalties. Okay. Yeah. There we go. See, that's the business side of songwriting. Fifty fifty split because we did equal work. Um, if so, I love that one more older version. Oh, okay. You. Listen, Nicholas, can I point out how sexy your voice? Is I've missed it. Oh, okay, Nazi. Thank you. Is it this one or is it <laughs> this one? Which one do you like? <laughs> Jeez, Linda. Bye. I call Nazi Linda, so if I say Linda, that's who I'm talking to. Uh, goodbye, Amelia. Have a good day at work. Yeah, Nicholas is uh Nicholas is the show, Mama Tom ago. But Thank um you. yeah, I want I want to organize a barnable night to go to the bottoming process. So uh T B P T B P use fan fan twenty percent off discount for the discount code twenty percent off. Uh Nazi, you were at the show today in one sentence or less. Please describe your experience. I was just gonna ask what bad word she used. I started the bad word on my end. Who's she? Me? I met her? I don't know. Because I say a lot Thank of you, words. Coggles. Nazi was there. She was the one I was sitting to the right of me, and I was holding on to dear life, crying. We were like sobbing that. together. And Nicholas had the audacity to make fun of us while we were like crying during his play that he wrote. I'm sorry, but people literally feeling sad is pull, funny. Break our hearts. You're so rude to write a play. I about laughed me. until I cried, then cried because it hurt so much, but it was beautiful at the same time. There you go, that's the quote. Print it. Put it on a sticker. I laughed until I cried, then I cried because it hurt so much, but it was beautiful at the same time. And something that you um, said that's really poignant, Nazi, I don't know if you heard Nick, but she's like, it, it doesn't only hungry. relate to people from who oh, identifies right. Asian American or queer. Like, it's anybody can see themselves in this play in yes. different ways. Yes. It's like, it, that, again, like we were saying, like, you know, with your storytelling, if if you can just be honest with yourself, yourself. If you can just be honest with yourself, <laughs> your story well. has a larger reach and has a greater potential to be universal. Mm. Um, so, you know, I encourage you, whatever that is, whatever your outlet is, whether it's writing or singing or Linda, whatever. we should plug you. There's 3,000 people in here. You are brown and proud <laughs> and, you know, I'll play, I'll literally play Runaway right now because you oh, wrote yeah, that. Oh, yeah, let's play Runaway. And Iran is Asia. And she's female and straight. She's literally mother. <laughs> she's also German. <laughs> she speaks many languages. Linda, German, how do you, you're going to be on the front page of Farsi, right now. English, body language. <laughs> so, um, See, told you. Nicholas set it up. You, you wrote it with her. Runaway. Did I write Runaway with you? I think I wrote Clouds. With you. No, I thought you wrote Runaway, no? Did I write Runaway with you? Did, didn't did you guys write Runaway? No, I don't think I did. Oh, oops. I don't think I did. Who did she write it with? I wrote this, like, real, this real slapper called Clouds with Nazi. Oh, I remember that Clouds. That one was so good. Where is Clouds? I know, that song was the business. Anyway. Oh, eventually. Oh, eventually. Sorry. That one was lit. Wait, is that on here? Where's Eventually? Oh, shit. I mean, oh, mm. Nicholas. That one was oh, so good. God. Where's Eventually? Do we have that? It's not. You didn't release it, did you? Oh, that one was so good. Mama Tom ago. Wait, Linda, how do we find it? Is it on YouTube? I'm trying to plug you, girl. It's, it's not, not released. released. Okay. Where do we find it? I'll play Runaway if that's yeah, we'll the play case. Runaway, runaway. Okay, I'll play. I'll play Runaway because uh, we're about spotlighting, and um, I love my friends. Okay, uh, this is this is uh, this is um, what? What'd she say? Oh my god! What? Wait, what is that? What is that? It's casting for artists that plays next show. Oh. <gasps> That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> you don't know what we're talking about. Oh my god, I just got like 
I know. Oh, is that so exciting? Ever. That's so cool. <laughs> It has nothing to do with me. Nothing good is happening. Oh my god, I feel like it's someone that we know. It's yeah. Oh my god, I feel. I wow, this I feel so powerful knowing this information. (laughs) Somebody, okay, that's so cool. Someone that we know got is is going to be very possibly going to be booked in something, and we're just excited about. That's all. Okay, here's "Runaway" by Nazi Nasiri, another um, songwriter friend who's amazing, right here in chat. Crazy for not loving you the way you love me, the way you love me. I was sick and tired of the heartbreaks, couldn't take no more. You come along, and you prove me wrong. You're always there to get me through the night. Oh, baby, I think I'm too blind to see. You ask yourself. Wasn't that song so good? That's Runaway by Nazi Nasiri, you know this, y'all. You know the song is good where, like, I haven't heard it in, like, a year or two, and I, like, knew the word still. <laughs> yes. Um, use the Nazi command, N-A-S-I, um, to learn more information about that Nazi. That song was sexy. I was, like, ready to start my own bottoming you, process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. I'm starting about so – what do you say? It's so good. I'm, I was about to start my own bottoming, bottoming process. Oh, my gosh. Um. Yeah, wait – Nazi, the it's under the sounds or whatever it is. Yeah, on it YouTube. used to be. You did like a live performance of eventually on a YouTube thingy, right? Search it. Nazi. Yes, oh, yes, bitch. <gasps> Work, play it. Okay, hold on. You it's have so to hear this one. Good. Okay, because this it's one's actually so... related to Nicholas. Because they. It's so good. It I don't even set it up. I don't know. I don't remember. Nazi sings it. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is eventually by Nazi Nasiri. Oh, I remember this. We were talking about it.
wrecked my heart I was blinded by your false love from the start You were my world, my moon and my stars I never felt so good than when wrapped up in your arms For you went to the road dreams of a life that we would share oh, oh, oh. now I'm left with a broken soul gasping for air eventually you'll wait away eventually Oh, so I forgot good. That we, when we would write songs together, another like, smash. We would be like we were doing bridges. Coggles, thank you for giving this up to Nazi. Nazi, you have a sub. Welcome Ooh. to the Barnable Club. You now have access to my emails. If you hit that little um, like happy face button at the bottom of the chat, you can use all the dog pictures things. Yes, bridges. Thank you for the follow to its. Can you read that, Nicholas? It's gag. Get by, it's uh, the gag top left. Worthy. Top left. It's Gabukan. <laughs> Gabukan. Are you from the Philippines? <laughs> what? I don't know. But thank you for the follow. Welcome in. My name is Michael. This is Nicholas Pillipil. We are both Filipino American storytellers. Nicholas is a playwright and songwriter. I'm a songwriter, actor, musician, dog lover, if you will. Um, but uh, yeah, we've been um, talking for the past hour and a half or so about the storytelling process, specifically. Uh, being from um, uh, being from the Asian American Pacific Islander. Um, Does anyone have community. any more questions? Yeah, any questions, concerns, thoughts, or anything? Thoughts as in mine. Thoughts as in that hoe over there. Nicholas, what? Hoe is not a bad word. You could say it on TV. Damn. Okay, sorry. Unfortunately, I have to go. Thank you, Jamie, for hanging out. Sucks living on the wrong coast. Bye. Bye, Jamie. Bye. Whatever his name is. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie hates me. <laughs> yeah, because you dragged me. Nicholas. His name's Nicholas. Think of, like, St. Nicholas, if you will. Um, but, yeah. Any other thing you want to share? Because I know we should wrap up soon. But um, 
No. Okay. Just, you know, if you're in town, come watch my play. Come see the play. You're What's not? next for you? This better question. Uh, this play? After the play. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Ask me what's next. Michael Barnum, what's next? Well, um, somebody told me that I should produce more. Oh, right. Michael Barnum's a producer now. <laughs> I know what it was just teasing him. I'll be damning you this sweaty shirt. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Jamie. Um, yeah, no, uh, to, to kind of round out things, in this time chat where I'm – this is what we were talking about today. Today, I was like, Michael Barnum, you need to produce a song that's all a cappella. Okay, hold on. You're giving away the secret. Shh, oh, is it they, a secret? Stop, don't say anything. Okay. Stop. Well, the other thing that I was oh going to say is that I was just going to give him a song that I wrote myself as a homework assignment and that he should just oh, produce. Oh, that's fine. You can say that. He should produce it by himself. Give away more secrets. Mama Tom ago, come to the show, then you hear more, huh? Um, I, uh, in this time where I'm recovering and, and my voice and all this stuff, I'm really realizing that as much as music has been a vessel for my voice as a as a storyteller or whatnot, there are other ways that I can tell stories. If I wanted to jump into playwriting, I, I could. It. It's my thing. Don't do it. I can't do it. That's really. I don't need more competition. Oh, you think light skinned you're... Asians? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but you, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's different ways for me to use my voice. Like I have now owned the title of a content creator and creative storyteller. So I'm not just a music streamer. I'm not just a musician. I'm not just a singer. If anything, those things are a part of me, but it is not my whole entire identity. If that makes sense, you know? So I'm going to find ways to be creative in any way that I can, whether that's writing music, acting, what have you. We need to encourage Michael Barnum to do more acting. I know it's Boo -boo, not easy. I'm I know doing it's, that. I know, you need to let me finish my sentence. I know it's not as easy to do it, but I just feel like I want to put it out there that you, as his supporters, need to. Um, oh, he's just, calling them out. Just like give him the energy, you know, like mm. just lift him up. He needs it because I really want him to get in his acting bag again. And um, I, have, I, have I know you're trying, but I'm trying to let them put in vibes into the universe. Stream on Spotify, you know, like you know, if they just think good thoughts for you, maybe it might help. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I'm not saying to try harder because I know you're trying hard. I'm telling them Thank to you. just think good thoughts about you. Thank you. And also because then what's going to happen is they're going to be like, hey, Michael, I hope you're doing well with acting. Oh. How's it going, Michael, with your acting? And maybe one day if you want to talk about it, you will because they asked you a question. Well, I mean, like, Thank you. if they're going to invest in you, they might as well invest in every aspect of it. IJS. I'm just saying. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yes. Uh, in this time. Wow. We spiked viewers. Thank you for the uh, follow Boone Gaming and Boy5. Hello. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been chasing that acting dream again because I graduated with a degree in theater. Then, like, in 2017, quit, like, my corporate job to pursue music full time, right? Because at the time, music was paying more than acting so i did pursue acting for a good while then i stopped to do music but now i'm back in this place where i'm not able to sing as much as i did before that makes sense so yes he's an actor he's an artist he's in a he's a performer you know so do a soliloquy right now three two one oh i for where else thou oh see well then that's why you're not booking i'm just kidding <laughs> thank you that I need I need to get better on the material with Shakespeare. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Shakespeare is gross. Shakespeare is Jane Austen. Dude, <gasps> what? <laughs> Which, if you like Jane Austen, you'll love uh, you Rosie's will, character. You'll love my play if you yeah. love Jane Austen. Full of references. Yeah. If you hate Jane Austen, you'll also love it because... If you like books. Yeah, if you like books, yeah. Compliments! We love them. They're the ones Try that the called us the Pasig and Paul, but like... No, I know who they are. Okay. I listen to their music. Good. There was one album. I don't remember which one it was, but you like released an album, and I listened to it quite often when it first came out. My I, their album. Oh think yeah, it yeah. was like I think you had like a Hamilton album or something like that. Yeah, they have and it. I yeah, was, I listened to it for a while when it first came out. There you go, yeah. fangirling. The compliments. Yeah. There's a line in my play where he says, and I just took it as compliments. <laughs> and that's why you should come to the show, <laughs> Alicia. Greg, come come down, come back. You there's are too a, kind, Nicholas. There's a Barnumal night. We're trying to organize a Barnumal night, and we're all going to show up in our Barnumal gear. 
That actually sounds so much fun. I know I'm kind of half know. joking, we but like, admin it. Someone who worked in corporate America better admin all this. I worked in group sales as well. Uh, see, so hit me up. Brownies for everyone. No burb. John Lee, thank you so much for the hundred biddies. Thank you. See, they got the shirt. Thanks for the biddies. What's a biddy? Like, uh, it's like the currency for Twitch. Work. Like Candy Crush has coins. Twitch has biddies. America Bits. has dollars. Yes. Oh, bitties, not what? biddies. Biddies. Like, like t- bits. N- no. <laughs> bits. So, bitties. Yeah, but yeah, they call not them biddies. Bits. But what's a bitty? That's what people, some people call bitties. Oh, so it's a bit. Yeah, bit. Okay. Oh my god. Use less sugar bits. and bits. Thank you for the bits. Drier and more crumbly. Mm. Uh, Burb makes um uh if you questionable use, brownies. If you use um more like liquid in um baked goods, then it becomes more airy. He's a, a ve- vegan. You bake vegan things, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. We should bring back your vegan cooking show on oh. my Twitch. No, no thanks. It's so stupid. That was like the source of our entertainment when we were stage, like doing stage. Oh, is it? Thing my during show? the shows. Was it my my vegan show? Yeah, because you would show us your stuff, and then like when we're bored. Oh God. You would show us. <laughs> <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> You would show us your YouTube videos, and I'm like, wow, he's very creative. Oh, I, yeah, I'm very creative. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, but there you go. If you use less sugar and make goods, it becomes drier and more crumbly. I will, I will, um. Ooh, I have a donut in agree my purse with right now. I forgot. Oh, the vegan donut. Yeah. You should eat it on stream. No, gross. That's extra. It's like showing feet for free. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Jolly music. Uh, thanks for the shout out, um, Coggles. Appreciate it. John Lee Music is another music streamer, uh, but not here in L.A. Hi, John Lee. Uh, remember to split in the hole. Okay. Burb. Oh, you want to watch the bottoming process? It's all about holes. Burb. Yes. That line. That Don't. hole. <laughs> it is. That's what the play's about. I know. I'm just laughing because it's so on point. Burb, you want to see the bottoming process. That's what you want. That's what you want. You do love. Great. I love holes, too. Well, Any hole is a goal. Does anyone want to hear any of my nasty raps? Oh, my God. Because one of them talks about holes. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to say them. They're really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> do you do, like, holes the movie? When I'm bored in my car, I write, I literally write 16 bar raps. <laughs> oh, my. Coggles. <laughs> yes. Yep. He kind of balances me out, for sure. Nicholas. Um, okay. Where do we go from here? Uh, any of the last minute questions, chat? Nicholas after dark. It's true. Well, it is almost 10 o'clock. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I just want to say thank y'all for. Has anyone ever read A Little Life? That's my favorite book. Okay, he doesn't want to stop. Okay, keep going. What? what? Is it? We're talking. Okay, I'm just. I was worried about like they you. They had a conversation. Okay, fine. Let's are, what, are you on a. Never mind. No, I'm not on any rush. I was just want to be cur- courteous that you have work tomorrow. Oh, I do. But like. I okay, fine. Let's keep talking. I don't want to. What g- book are you talking about? No, no. He. Could, I was just trying to have a normal conversation. Let's have a conversation. Well, I don't want to have a conversation. Well, what book were you talking about? No, he was just saying what his favorite book. There, I'm sorry. There, I don't know your pronouns. <laughs> um, you, you were saying you, your favorite book. And I was like, if I was a normal person, I'd be like, oh, great. Well, my favorite book is this. Have you read it? I have to remind myself to ask people questions in social situations because <laughs> I don't ever remember to. Ninja, this is such a great duo. I, I, right, we balance each other out. So we like, look one in the same. I'll literally be talking to someone, and then I'm, I'm like, oh, you have to ask them a question now. So I'll be like... You keep talking because my, my... And then I'll ask the question. I need to pop a log. It's, like, very hard to be social. It's exhausting. Oh, no, now I don't know what to do. Ah. <laughs> hmm. Hi. Michael, come back. I'm nervous. Story time? What kind of story time? What do you want to know? They want the juice. What kind of juice? They want they want the scoop. They want that scoop. What kind of scoop? Ice cream? I have ice cream. Strawberry. Ice cream. What's your favorite Michael story? Uh, I'm not here. I don't know. There's none. There's none. Think. Mm. 
ninja bestie, how could you do this to me? I don't know if there's like one specific one. I think in just in general, I'm very proud of him as a person. He does so much and has achieved a lot. It's a nice manufactured statement. No, it is not. He does so much. He's okay. All right, tell me. Go ahead. Why? Why are you proud? Hmm, let's find my story of him. Oh, I don't. I'm proud of you. We did a musical together. It was really fun. Oh, my spirometer. That was really fun when we did that musical together. We traveled from Mount to Bali. Da 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 da. da, da. Do 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 do. Sideshow. And then, in the rehearsal, because I'm a tenor, I had to sing the high part, but I was too nervous to sing the high note in front of everyone because I'm shy. And so, like, I copped out. And, and then, he made me. And then the musical director gave it to Michael. And the and the thing is, Michael's not a tenor. So he struggled to sing it, but he could do it. Yeah. And I could have done it the whole time, but I was too shy. And don't give up on your dreams, folks, because then you just lose the good note to someone else who can barely do it, too. There you go. That's it? Yeah. My favorite Nicholas story is... That time he picked me up from rehab and... What? And, like, I was really grateful that um that you supported me i'm just kidding <laughs> you didn't i was like <laughs> when did i do that i didn't go to rehab <laughs> it was like getting into a moment i'm like did i do that oh my god i'm such a good friend <laughs> have you ever been to disneyland together we have no i don't know i'm not into doing things like, I don't like leaving my house. Like, this is a struggle for me. Oh, my favorite story is actually, I don't know if Nazi's still here, but we go to karaoke. Oh, yes. And um, Nicholas likes to belt out the Phantom of the Opera in that high note, that high C that's at the end. And I remember just being in the the karaoke place, just like I couldn't breathe because he just went there for it. And this is somebody that's just like will not shy away from a note anymore. Um, if it's with people that he feels safe in, and if I could pull up the oh, I re- I remember um, we were singing "Emotion" by Destiny's Child, the Destiny's Child's version, and I sang the high note in that one too, and you lost it. Yeah, that's right. That Nazi, you were there, right, right there. Yeah, the high note is everything. But don't, you're gonna burst I'm people's. Gonna do it. I I actually don't think I can sing it anymore. You don't have it in you. I don't think I have it anymore. I don't believe you. I haven't done it in forever. So I, yeah, I don't. I don't think I. I do not. I don't think my body believe has you. that anymore. Is that I'm so trying right? to. I'm going through my Snapchat to find the clip. It was in like 2000. Oh, I have this. What do you have? So when I was recording the demo for Milo's song, I sang the whole thing in opera because it was easier to do than actual. <gasps> what is that? That's your birthday oh. at Nazi's. Oh, my chat! Na- my I bought him birthday. shoes for his birthday once, and I, I tried to them. give it to him, and he was like, "No, I don't want it." He got like he gets he doesn't like accepting gifts. You, I remember you like screamed and you got scared. <laughs> Probably sounds like me. And you, we had Rosie drive from all the way across <laughs> town, and Jonathan was there too. Oh yes. Oh look! This one. This one. Right here. <laughs> Wait, I gotta plug in. Listen, Nazi, you're in this. This is at your old um your your the place no! like three houses that you lived to go that was literally down the street from each other. But um this is okay, this is Nicholas's birthday. Okay, this is oh the clip you're about to hear is me um giving Nicholas his, his gift and it's a pair of shoes and this is you can hear him at the end screeching for pain because he doesn't like gifts. Here we go. No. no. <laughs> That's Nazi laughing. Uh, I gave him. I'm giving him the shoe. Uh, Everyone's like. <laughs> and that no. Nicholas going. No. <laughs> oh my god. Shoes. Oh my god. You still wear them today? I do. I wear them to work out. Oh my god. Aww. Dude. <laughs> Shoes. I missed the hug. Dang it. Oh, he's putting them on. Try them on. Oh, look at those legs. I'm wearing booty shorts on this. <laughs> you are wearing booty shorts. Oh, look at you. He likes his shoes. Oh, I have shoes. the whole thing, baby. Look. 
How long did it take you to pick those? Oh wait, I can't watch this. It's so long. embarrassing. I look disgusting. Embarrassing stories. Ugh. What did I get you? Oh, I still use that too. What is that? That's from Rosie. Their journal. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm done. I'm done with that. <laughs> Who's in this? Oh, it's Linda. No, I have not. In this. What is it? We, remember, we did this. Oh, my God. Yeah. October 10 to 11, 2016. Linda. Nazi Nasir, Jacob Alexander, Michael Barnum, and then some other dude. But look. Oh, my God. Linda. Oh, away from this cold and misty world. What did she say? I'm hearing things I'm dangerously in love with. Yeah, yeah. You remember this? Uh, Linda? That's great. And then Jacob, and then the, people. <coughs> the white wow. people. Wow, the yeah. white people. I'm trying to find where we were went to karaoke. Anyway, oh, this is when I was on Keep with G. Remember? Oh my God. Okay. Anyway, you can talk to the chat. Snapchat. He's on his snap. Who has Snapchat still? Do people still use that? Um, I do. Hmm. I, mean, I feel like porn stars use that for like extra money. Like just like, oh, if you pay more, listen, you don't out snap. me. I I have to make money somehow. Nothing wrong with sex work. Yeah. I know you wouldn't judge me if I if I told you I sold no. my feet pics, right? I would sell my feet pics. Why don't you? I don't know. Never thought about it. Do you you don't think your toes are? Oh, to they th totally are. I just never. They like... totally are. Yeah, they totally are. They toe, toe. Did you get my joke? Oh, I know. You didn't like. I heard it. Oh. You should write it in a play. It's funny. Anyway, where are you finding these clips? Uh, Nazi, it's in my Snapchat stories because, you know, you share them. I mean, you can save them there. Anyway, Nazi, I know you wouldn't judge me if I told you that I sold my feet, but I don't. I don't, Twitch. I don't. I would. Yet. Um, You would? Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of it's work, though. Feetfinder.com. My dream. Oh, my God. My dream. We were talking about where the cast because some of them are famous. We were talking about their um, wiki feats. And I was like, I, I want Wikipedia. I was like, I want to be famous enough to have a wiki feed. Like, and I'm like so jealous because like I'm like, oh, you guys have wiki feed pages, <laughs> and like one of them has a four point nine out of five, the other one has like a three, and I was like, you have a four point nine on wiki feed. Show me your feet right now i would not only judge you but i would want you to help me do it too okay i got you but the thing listen is like you we'll make a society the thing is like you can't ghoul someone you know it's wiki feet it's weird so okay, it's like we're done it would be like did you know fun fact on twitch you can't show your feet why it's just tos it's it's against terms of service we won't do that you're you're gonna get me disqualified That's a shoe. but still you can't see if you know you know yeah the compliments agree it's weird to google someone you know on wiki feet don't don't show your feet. Anyway. One time I tried to make a Wikipedia page for myself and they deleted it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, and in high school I used to edit Kelly Osbourne's Wikipedia page because I was a huge fan. <laughs> That's such a, like great fun fact. I need more better fun facts when I like audition because I always like say like tell us a fun fact about yourself and I'm like oh I like to hike. And oh like, gross. Well, what should I say? Tell me how I interesting don't know. Say I am. Something fun. Tell me something that's interesting about me. Well, what do you think is fun? Hiking is not fun. I Wait, like, like dogs. Like, like not, Oh, my God. The fun fact is I like dogs, but I've never had one. That's the fun fact. <laughs> well, that is. That's a fun fact. That's weird. That's interesting. <laughs> Literally everyone loves dogs. Don't show your feet unless you are climbing up your chair due to a spider. That's true. I'm not. I, I'm afraid of spiders. Are you afraid of spiders? Yes. I think your fun fact could be like, <clears throat> fun fact, um... <laughs> I only drink room temperature water. Um, that is not interesting at all. It's weird. Um, let's see. Look, there's a spider clip. I hate that. I, I you think... could say, fun fact. Um, yeah, I need fun facts about me. Fun fact. I definitely look Asian, but for some reason, people think I'm white. That happens to you, and I think it's so weird because you don't look white to me at all. I have a white last name, but yeah. people don't. And that's that's just. Did I look Asian to you when I first met you? Yes. Oh, okay. you look so Asian to me. <laughs> I knew you were Filipino. Yeah, because I'm hella brown and my nose is wide. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't like to smile a lot because when you smile, my nose goes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Also, sometimes I just stare in the mirror 
and then I look at how my face moves and what lines they create, uh-huh. and then I practice not moving them. Interesting. Anti-aging. I'm like what they call mestizo, right? Yes. Like a little lighter yeah. in skin tone. Yeah, like someone in your ancestors was probably r word by a white person. Okay. You like how I did that? Yes. That censorship? Good for you. Yes. Yeah, Good right? job. Taking notes here. Good. The compliments. I mean, my are grandpa's white. I mean, honestly, we're all my, white. My Lolo is like a quarter white. See? Yeah. Well, Which is why I don't have a white last name. My grandpa's full white. I mean, that's white, why so I have I a win. white last My white privilege wins against yours. Okay. Hold on. We're not talking. We're just about amplifying AAPI voices. Anyway. Not how white we are. What? <laughs> <laughs> This is this has gone off the rails in the best way possible. Um, I uh, I was very happy to have you come on. You, he act. This was his idea because I didn't really want to extend it because I just like I don't know what it looked because like. Because I took initiative. I'm a selfless, selfish, mm-hmm. shellfish, selfish, selfish, shellfish. I'm a shellfish, shellfish promoter, and I wanted to plug my show. As you should. I want people to come. Yes. You know? And whether or not we get a sale, like, no more people know about you? Yeah. If we don't get a sale, I will be sad, and I will hunt you down. But at least your lives are better because you know me. It's always a great time having Nicholas here. It's unhinged <laughs> every time, Coggles. But again, the bottoming process playing now through June 12th in Hollywood. There's a the details there. Use FanFan at checkout for 20% off tickets. If y'all want to go together. Or you can come on Mondays. Mondays are all pay-what-you-can night. So if you're poor, pay luck. We saw a homeless person today, and they were oh like, God. "They were like, I really want to go, but I'm homeless." And I was like, "Come on Mondays, it's pay what you can. You could literally walk in and be like, what I can pay is zero, and then just watch the show." <laughs> but I don't think you're homeless because you're on the you're on the internet right now, which means you're paying for the internet, which means you can at least pay a dollar. <laughs> no, but isn't it true? Like marketing tactic, though, like. When it is pay what you can, so like the honesty policy, people tend to pay more. That's true. I do find that true. See, but the thing with the pay what you can, it's it's all about accessibility. So the reason why we do those is like we don't want to put any barriers for someone to see the show. So it's like if you can't afford to go, go on that night. It's available to you. I like the. You know I like I mean? that. There's a moment for that. Yeah. So whatever you can give. He's not homeless. He has a doghouse. Oh no, he's he's talking about somebody that we met today. Toothless, not homeless. Oh my god. Does anyone know where that's from? Homeless, not toothless. Anyone? It's gonna take a bit because there's a delay. But anyone? Yeah. Sure. Let's mm-hmm. see. And survey says nobody. Nobody. The worst. Don't tell them that. What's that mean? Train your dragon. Is that, Is that where it's from? No, it's from Real Housewives of Desperate. Oh, no Real no. Housewives of Beverly Hills. Hello, Peaches. I got my peaches out in Georgia. So you have country songs you want me to like produce, huh? Oh yeah, you have a country song, yeah. Like with Twang. Yeah. Hello, um, first time chatter. My name is Michael. This is Nicholas, my best friend. My he country is a uh, Filipino American playwright, award winning playwright, songwriter, and um, he's just super talented. And we're happy to have him on my stream. Be sure to smash that follow button if you haven't already. I usually stream music on here, but today we are chatting away. What is that? that? Careful. Uh, You can follow me on social media feeds, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube here. Follow Nicholas. Uh, Who else? All the things. Where are my lyrics? We're going to wrap up soon because chat. I have a gig tomorrow and I, I have to... I have to... Somehow manage and get through. Three days. I have a song called Three Days. Don't tell them all your secrets. It's just a title. How does it go? Um, C F G G seven C C C seven F minor G G seven. C. Sing it. Oh, it's capo three. I don't have a capo, but. Three days spent. I think it's like three days I spent alone. Staring at the ceiling, misbelieving what you're gone. Okay. I can still smell you in the bed that we share. Oh, that's dark. Yeah. Okay. It's like a true song. Okay. <laughs> Though it kills me and it breaks me, but I have to move on. <laughs> Told you. See, I already know where he's going with it because as we write, we write so well together. We're writing a song. 
Three years I spent Lost you Lost in you I loved like hell Love like hell But so, lost myself along the way You sound like Johnny Cash <laughs> Yeah, that's the whole point Oh, okay Perfect, I don't have to sing it I can still yeah. feel you in my skin No, it goes, it goes I can still feel you in my skin uh-huh. But you're not there There Ding, ding Though it kills me kills and it me breaks me, and it breaks but me. I have to move on. <laughs> what is happening here? It's a bridge. Is it wrong that I loved you? After all we've been through, you're using me and throwing me away. You got the chords right. Lying this is definitely country. And cheating. My heart took a beating, but still I loved you the same. <laughs> Three weeks it took from my last scene. Oh, yeah, I don't think how it goes. Oh, it just goes straight to that cover okay. of the verses. Go. Okay. So I think it's like. <laughs> Welcome weeks, to the songwriting process. Three weeks it took for my last tear I shed for you. I don't remember. It's a slow road back. Oh, wait. To finding me again without you. I think that's what it is. So it kills me and it breaks me. I have to move on. And it repeats, I think. No, so it kills me and it breaks me. But I still love you. Something like that. I don't know. Okay, I hear the country. You actually picked really like. Told you, I I told you I wrote a country song. You actually <laughs> picked the right like um the the court the chordal um. No, like the structure of it is very um, country. Country. So you got it. I told you. C-U-N-T-R-Y. C-O-U-N-T-R-Y. Not when I write country. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I think that'll, that's our time here, chat. Look, it got us to 3,000 followers. Everyone was obsessed with that song. Okay. If you want Michael Barnum to produce that song, say it now. I will be producing country music now. Yeah, say it now. Because I'm going to give him that song to produce as his homework. Okay. Do you have produce. a recording of it so I can hear what you sound like? No. I make one. I probably have it in a voice memo somewhere. Well, we can, we could do like a little um you could sing it for me before you go. That's your homework cuz you made me stay yes. till the wee hours at your house. See? Jean Oliver Jean Olivier. Jean Olivier Shin. That's sexy. You like that? Jean Olivier. It's like it's like Timothée Chalamet. <laughs> <laughs> what? I love Timothée. Chalamet. Also, if you like, call me by your name. There's a there's a. Oh, yeah, there's a whole the... call me by your name thing in the play. There's a whole Jane Austen thing, Emma. Yeah. Thing if in the you're play. a book lover, yeah. There's um, what's the last book a you read? Little Life. Um, I'm reading The Shards by Brent Ellison. I started reading Sunny Hostin's new book. She's a host on The View. Oh yeah, yeah. She's the um the the, the lawyer. Yeah. Or the DA or something like that. She's a lawyer. She's a and lawyer. Um, but I, I kind of took a good night, Coggles. Thank you for modding. Appreciate it. We're gonna sign off here because I know. Yeah, we are it's off 10 the rails and we should go. Yes. Um. But be sure to follow Nicholas. Please. On yeah. All the social medias using keep the in Nicholas touch. Commit. Um. If you want more, they want you to be here more. All often. of this. Let the people know, and by the people, I mean I guess him. <laughs> Good night, Jean Olivier. Um, follow Nicholas there. Well, thank you for your time. Are you, are you really thankful? Oh my God, are you really coming on the fourth? Shut up. Who? Ah! For the fourth is gonna be a good day. Oh my God. That's when George's mom is coming. They did it. Oh my God, we're gonna do the shirt. Woo! You did it. Ah! Okay, you get a shirt. Oh my god, I love you. We love them. Aww. Wait, I want to go now. It's going to be a hella party. Wait, I want to go. I need to. Yeah, go on the floor. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I just signed on with that thing. So what the, thing? The, the, the thing. Oh. That I did the thing. What time is it at? I don't know. It's I only wanna, an I hour. Get my, that's literally. Well, the fourth is a Sunday, so it's at two. That's literally the first day of where that is thing it starts. The, is it the. Yeah. Or is it the. No, it's like. It's like. It's the it's the first day. I, yeah, I, I'll text them. Okay, okay, okay. 
Or if not, then come afterwards. Okay, I'll hang after. You can't talk to them during the show anyways. That's true. We'll get lunch or something afterwards. Or oh you, my can come God, be- wait. you can come before the show because I made crafted drinks inspired by my play at the coffee oh, shop across true. the street. Oh, that's true. And there's this taro that's true. oatmeal Ta- latte. Why do you say taro? Because it's, it's called, I, I'm in America. It's taro. You're a <laughs> Filipino-American. It's so good. Taro. It's, it's, a, it's a taro. Well, technically, taro is generally Southeast Asian and ube is Filipino. We say tarp with the but, compliments and I. Um, yeah, there's a drink that I made that's like a taro espresso. It's really good. Okay. But yeah, it was a really good drink. It was so good. It's called um, Milo's Pinoy when Pride. When are we going to see that TikTok that you made today? Oh, I have to make it still. Oh, okay. But if you go to my TikTok. Follow him. You can see me doing a little, I mean the string, uh, transition. You know, you can see one mm. of those things. Like, you know, where he goes into the camera and you're like, oops, yeah. I'm in a new spot. <laughs> I have that photo of you. We have to. I have to take Nicholas's new like um, professional photos because Lord have mercy. Oh, my God. I need to do a headshot. Um, I mean, like, if you go to my website and see what my headshot looks like, like, who is that? Okay, but you're cute here. Who is that? Oh, I do look cute. Yeah. Here. I wish I was wearing something better. Maybe I'll... <laughs> this one will oh, get nervous. Okay, we'll do another one. Yeah, we will. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This yes, one's cute. Yes, I'll do new headshots. This is cute. Cute, yes. Yes. Who's Kuyas? Kuyasi. Cute. Oh, Kuy- Kuyasai. Hi. He's Filipino. We should go. Let's go. Yeah, I do want to go. Um, Where are we going? Yeah, well, to my show. <laughs> Everyone, Barnabal <laughs> night and sometime go watch Nicholas's uh, performance. Yes, yeah, Kuisai. This is my best friend Nicholas. He's a Filipino American songwriter, um, playwright. Uh, um, and he wrote a play called The Bottoming Process. It's playing and now. It's about in being Asian and queer, being specifically Filipino, mm-hmm. and about our issues when we love white people too much. <laughs> it really is. It's about like it is falling in love with it white is. people. <laughs> And how Al- they, they mess Alicia, up. Alicia, I wish I could be in that lives. theater with y'all because I would. I I was I was sobbing. He was today. Sobbing, and it was the second time he saw it. I and, didn't. And I he, cried he more cried this time more around. This time around, yeah. yeah. So who knows? Maybe the next time I want, I'm gonna be like just a puddle in the corner. You like them too much. <laughs> who do we like too much? Whatever you just said. Oh, cool. Yeah, I love them too. Let's much. all do new headshots. Yes, I'm here for it. All right. Well, I guess it's ten. It is time. Um, wanted to get to June third, but also that. Oh, June third sold out. Oh, actually. Oh. It's because it's Filipino night, and so like, Phil <gasps> Phil M Arts is a LA thing, and they bought the entire night, so they're actually reselling tickets for like twice the price. Oh. Yeah. So that's why it's Jeez. sold out. Oh, like okay. the only way to get tickets to that is to go to the Phil M Arts website. Oh, where got the tickets it. Because it's twice Phil as much. Yeah. Sigue, claro. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, you know, Filipino people. <laughs> uh, compliments or, or mods? Can we um, can we activate our raid call and we'll get ready to raid? Thank you. Let's say thank you to Twitch for thank putting us on Twitch the front page. For putting us on the front page and amplifying Asian American Pacific Islander creators. And I also want to say, like, thank you for amplifying API creators. Thank you for amplifying this stream, which is featuring Southeast Asians, mm. Filipino Americans. Thank you, Ninja. Brown Filipino Americans. I'm gonna look for someone to raid. It's very specific. You and keep very, talking. They very want important more of you. to me that. Keep talking. You thought that was really enough to amplify? We had almost 3,000, like almost 3,200 3, viewers. That's Work. crazy. Work. It's because I lost five pounds and my jawline came in today. <laughs> <laughs> we should pass it out to another AAPI creator. Yeah. Who's that? Um, Compliments if you have some ideas. Ramiel Mulubai. Who? <laughs> she was on American Idol season seven. No, I'm <laughs> stupid. I was like, who? <laughs> um. I mean, it doesn't have to be music, but just AAPI. Oh, like, oh, playing their song or their channel. No, yeah, going, we're rating their channel, like go, moving our viewers to them. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Southeast Asian, yes. Southeast Asian, what's up? Um, see, can you go down here? So oh, there's okay. like a whole section. So then pick one of these AAPI. people. Yeah, one of these people. Um, let's see. We should pick someone. What doing, does he say? Doing like a thank mukbang. you, Michael and Nicholas. You're welcome. Do, you do, do they do like mukbangs eating geo ducks and stuff? We'll pick, pick that person. What? Yeah, they like eat like food. They yes, we should do a mukbang. You should do your mukbang of your. Vegan. I feel like if I started a Twitch channel, I would just want to play The Sims. That's what I would want to do. You know what I mean? Yep. Mm-hmm. That my, line in the play. Don't give it away. My Sims would be nasty. Like when I play The Sims, like I literally just like make them do each other. 
and then like make everyone have babies and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, I literally had to unplug my desktop and put it in the closet because I played The Sims too much. Because I'm too lazy to put it back together. So no okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, uh, chat. If you can uh, copy and paste that raid call, if you haven't already, if you have a microphone next to your name, See? copy and paste the sub raid call. That is how you play The Sims. I mean, it is. You give them the love aspiration, and then you just let them f around town. Do you put them in like pool and let them drown? Sometimes, yeah. When I'm like, yeah, but not all the time. I'm not like trying to kill them. I'm trying to like my thing is like I'm gonna recreate the charmed house, and then I'm gonna make these girls do people. Like you know, that's what I do. Got it. Okay. Um, hold on. I'm having trouble. Searching for targets. Okay, we're looking. I'm I'm looking too. Specifically, like if, if they could be in the AAPI community, I'm looking under those creators, but nothing is uh, showing up for me. Um, but Nicholas, thank you for giving us your time and energy. I hope this was as fun as you thought it would be. It is actually to have a lot of fun. I was really nervous. I'll leave the replay up if people want to watch it by chance. Yeah, let them watch it. Yeah. Like I love attention, but I when I get it, I don't know what to do with it, so it makes yes, me really nervous. That is that makes sense. Yeah. You know what? I think people need to be more vulnerable and admit that they love attention. <laughs> okay, I think we found one. Um, thank you. Compliments. Yeah, and it's um, I don't think it'll roll all the viewers over, but it'll. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Um, it's not music. It's fine. That's okay. Let's um. Let's it's go. It's a math channel. But with AAPI, that's perfect. An let's go. AAPI math channel. Hey uh, sis. Wait, the one, the one that Alicia's at me. Alicia. Ooh, she's playing Lion King. Yeah, let's go there. Okay, cool. Um, give me, can you hand me the keyboard? She's not playing Lion King. She's playing. <clears throat> Disney Dreamlight Valley. Goodbye, okay. And then love. grab that mouse and click Goodbye, in the love. in the chat where it says send a message. Okay. Chat, we're going to raid Sunshine. Sincerely, Sunshine Cat, who's playing some Disney game. They are hosting Disney Dreamlight Valley Twitch drops. Um, I, her name is Ash, I think. Ash is an Ashley. Cozy Chaos, Hunger Inducing Noms and Sunshine. Let's go there and show some love. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Sincerely, sun, hold on, Sunshine Cat. Did I spell that right? Sincerely, Sunshine Cat. I don't know her. Did I? I think that's right. Okay. Okay, here it goes. There it goes. Bye. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much, y'all. I really appreciate it. I got a gig tomorrow. Um, stick around and watch the Discord for update information on scheduling and all that. Be sure to follow Nicholas, if you haven't already, this was fun. Follow me on the social media feeds. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. Um, what else, Nicholas? This is your time to do a shameless plug before we go. No, this was really fun. It was honestly nice talking to all of you, even though you have no idea who any of you are. But now they do. It was it was nice to see how and you, you did so well with how like you uplift that many my friend people. every single day, and you you give him what he needs. So I thank you for that. I thank you. Um, yeah, go see the bottoming process now through June twelfth, and uh, for the rest of this month and from here on out, let's continue to amplify. No, Adriana, sorry, a Adriana. Adriana, damn it! I you mean, just oops. got here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, we're just about to rate on the Jenna. Oh, and Jenna, who's that? Uh, Jenna Sequel. They're you. Filipino. Woo! Should we cancel the rate? I'm just kidding. No, because you have to go. Well, right? I just want to say, I can stay for five minutes if you want. But it was nice to see you. Thank you. I'm sorry. This is my friend Nicholas. Oh, all the fam. Where were y'all? Sorry, you were late. They're Filipino. Hold on, hang on. We'll we'll delay it for like another. I'll cancel it for a second. Give them your spiel. Say them who you are. They'll watch the vod. Okay, hold on. What? This is Nicholas. He's oh. a Filipino American award winning playwright, work songwriter. Um, uh, what else? He's. Yes, yeah, she look. knows it too. Look, she agrees. Look. No look. 
Oh, yeah, I can be Google. It's hella cool. Let's go. See, Siri even knows. You just yeah, got like, home. If you say, Alexa, Google Stop. Nicholas Palapil, and she'll, like, read a whole spiel about me. <laughs> I've done it before because I Google myself every day. Um. Okay, <laughs> these are all the Filipino fans. Where are y'all? I said 7 o'clock. Y'all show up at 10 p.m. It's okay, Adriana. It was your dad's birthday. That's fine. But Jenna Sequa, hello, and Just. This is my yeah, I did. Best friend Nicholas right. Filipino. Some of the first album. He helped go write the first album. Oh, my God, Correct. and you missed yes. it because we wrote a new song together. That was inspired by my play, and we played it. It was an an, an original Nicholas and Michael and song. If, and Adrian, if you know Michael in the bathroom, George Salazar, he sings the song that Nicholas and I wrote that's in his play. Yeah. Um, Michael in the bathroom. What else? What, did, what else did they miss? Oh, you missed Nicholas sharing the most embarrassing story about me. I also shared the most embarrassing story about him. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What else? Most importantly, you missed the song. It's such a good song. <laughs> Audrey, come watch the play yes, June fourth. Yes, she heard it. We're trying to organize a Barnumal night. You got to hear the the real the not the, it's not the real version because you know there's no real version yet. Yes, but you got to hear the show version. It's kind of legit. Yes. Um, for your birthday. Yes. Oh. When's your birthday? June. Of uh, work. June third. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, we're going on the fourth, so I think it's perfect. <laughs> we are with the compliments for the fourth. I gotta watch the vod. Then. Yes, watch the vod. Uh, it'll. I'll leave it up here for like. 24, also, people who, so. who are buying tickets to the show, Michael's giving you a free Michael Barnum shirt, so we're all going to show up and wear our shirts. Oh, while supplies last, but you have to take a picture and tag Nicholas and I on Instagram to show that you purchased the ticket. Um, BA celebration time. No, you guys can all hang out without me. You're going to come. I'm I mean, gonna your try. thing is like an hour long. The show is almost two hours long, and it's all in the same area. It's fine. You think that? Huh. Yeah. But, um, I mean, you could come after or before. You know what? I'll hang out with you either, either way. Okay. I got to watch the VOD, yes. Uh, but yes. Or just be like, okay, fine. You could have your 30 minutes back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, got bigger during the pandemic, so Same. need a bigger size shirt. Me okay. Too. I mean, I feel big in this. I was. I feel. <laughs> The only reason I lost weight is because I was stressed working on this show. And he I wore eat. he wore the shirt today, and it was a really nice gesture because I didn't make him do that. And so when we got back, I was like, do you want me to, should I wear my shirt too? And so people think I'm aggressive because of my personality and that I mean because of my face, but I'm actually a really good person. He's really nice. People just don't know it because like I'm not a good but person. But he can't take a compliment for crap. No. 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 I can be like, Nicholas, you're so talented. It's an Asian thing. AAPI month is an Asian thing. We don't take compliments. You're so talented, Nicholas. You know, it's like the Asian thing. It's like you have one egg roll left, and you're like, you take it. And they're like, no, you take it. And he's like, I would rather die. We were literally there. I would rather die than take the last egg roll. And you're like, well, I would rather kill my mom than take the last egg roll. Oh, my God. And then he would be like, no, well, I would rather kill my entire family than take the last egg roll. And then eventually, you know, you go back and forth, and someone takes the last egg roll. Like, that's just what we do. We literally had that moment today when we were having dinner. Because I was like, it's your last egg roll. And yeah. then you're like, no, I don't want it. I said, but it's, you're like, I already had two. I was like, I had two. And I was like, let's split it. He's like, fine. No, no. And then we went, half it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we did. We said, half it. <laughs> and what's your hack and for- And that's it? being Asian. And what's your hack for um, um, letting egg oh, rolls- Oh, so like when um, egg rolls come to the table and so you want to eat it, right? And then you bite into it and it's hot. He takes a spoon. The secret is you take a fork or a spoon. You just stab all of the egg roll, stuff the steam out, and then you can eat them faster. It's the same reason why you don't drink hot coffee. I only drink iced coffee because if you drink hot coffee, then you have to wait 10 minutes to you like comfortably drink it. Like and I'm not going to wait 10 minutes to drink a, com- a comfortable coffee. You know what I mean? Yeah. This yeah. is Hot Topics with Nicholas. That is also a cut line from my play. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I drink iced coffee in a snowstorm. Like hot coffee, you have to wait ten minutes so you can comfortably drink it. Yeah, I'm not gonna wait ten minutes until absolutely. I can drink my coffee. Yes, absolutely. Okay, it's facts. Well, there you go. We stayed a few more minutes to uh, with with the all y'all catch the bod. I'm gonna reactivate the uh the raid again. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. But a thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sincerely. Sunshine. Suddenly, Seymour. Yes, George was in that. He was in that. Yeah, I understand why y'all get along. Inside Do you? Do you? He don't give me orders. I can spell it. He don't condescend. Okay. Passing it off to another AAPI streamer. They're playing Disney Valley. Something. You're welcome. I would do anything for you. Yeah, we, Not we, really, I but call, I would do a little bit extra for you. <laughs> we called uh, Jenna Tita Jenna. Oh. Tita Jenna. Work. Yeah. And she, she calls me Tito Mike. So. Oh. But that's our thing. Well. 
Tita Jenne, you have to see uh, Nicholas is a uh, play, me. huh? Not lying. <laughs> Ew. Wait, fun fact. <laughs> Nicholas's last name is Pilapo, but Pilapil. Um, his auntie, your auntie, right? Yeah. His auntie is that famous Pilar Pilapil, who's on the TFC and like but is she super actress. That's your auntie. Well, I don't know if she, how big but, she is. I yeah, don't believe, I don't listen, there. I bet every one of these family members know who Pilar Pilapil is. But that's Nicholas. Well, auntie. when I was on, I was being interviewed by Young Chavez. See, look. Do you know who Young Chavez is? Um, she does um, the TFC News Channel. She was interviewing me for my show, and she was like, "She was like, are you related to Pilar?" And I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> See, show business. You know, it's funny. I was doing a show at the Geffen. Do you know who John John Briones is? Yes. So John John Briones was in my show. Hurry. And the first thing he said to me was like, "Are you related to Pilar?" <laughs> That's Issa's um, dad. And yeah. I'm like, I need to. I need to look. All the name dropping. Bag. Okay, bye. Six okay. seconds. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Have fun. Oh my gulai. <laughs>